Hello, everybody. Welcome to 347 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka here in the Boston Sports Podcast family. Boys, after seven months of episodes, it countless interviews, and other Stanley Cup playoffs, we are at the last episode of the season. It is August, but things were pushed off about a month this year. Let's say hi to the boys first before we wrap up the last episode. Producer Mikey Granelli with another stellar season of hard work. Pulled it together this weekend in Motown. Not too Hockey many. Not Fest. too many. <laughs> Unreal stuff. G, how you feeling, buddy? I feel great. We pulled it off. We pulled it off, boys. We pulled off this amazing hockey fest this weekend, so I'm excited. Grinelli, sound less excited. Now I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> well, no, he's burnt out. I'm going to tell, 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 tell everyone at We're home right now. Out. Right? I'm going to tell everyone at home. August is a month of vacation. This show is going to be a little bit off the rails. We've been in Detroit for 15 months, it feels like. <laughs> it's been the best We're time. The we have absolutely blitzed this city. It was a fantastic couple nights. You can hear my voice. You can hear Grinelli, and you're going to hear Biz, believe me. So we're ready to just talk shop and go over the weekend, but don't think any of us. And we get the Murr here as well. Sorry, I forgot about the Murr. appearance, Murley. The Murl's here. He's been here the whole time. I got kicked in the Uh, Let me finish my statement, Biz, please. Okay, sorry. (laughs) Do not expect professionalism on this podcast. All right, so I'm being dead honest. Now, let's have a time. Biz, how you doing? I'm hurting. (laughs) I'm hurting. (laughs) I'm hurting You guys... Biz went hard. He uh, had a hell of a yeah. weekend. We'll get into that. Biz, just watch. What, what hurts the most? We, we think he broke two toes, but is it more like the inner hangover body or is it more the, the pain from the toes? So one learning experience from I think the whole, whole ball hockey, uh, roller hockey tournament, hockey fest as we're going to call it, was the, the 730 starts. And that is just absolutely ridiculous. So that's going to be a, one thing that we change about them. And the fact that we were getting belligerent rolling dice doubling down on 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 fucking whatever 19 maybe rolls i don't know that's probably how no it was 17 the dealer was all over me at the made hand no it was, it was ace eight it was 19 and i doubled but well, whatever yeah, whatever right. it, may it was be. late nights and then early mornings not a lot of sleep and we're, we're we're in one but the city of detroit treated us well it was an amazing hockey fest the whole barstool family and the event they were able to put on with brad jones um i think it it, it surpassed any expectation I ever had coming in. The city completely embraced it. I am so overwhelmed, and uh, I think we're living on a natural high, as they call it. Although we're probably all under. Well, it's it just like, it, it's been a long week. It's been a long week. <laughs> you left me hanging on a fist bump for the. I start. started oh, this oh week. God. I came in on Wednesday, and I played Oakland Hills. Shout out Oakland Hills. They just you know a little golf. They they just redid the South Course. They've had Ryder Cups, U.S. Opens, PGA's. They just did, redid the South. And it came out so beautiful. I got to play there. We got two sandbaggers after that. I had a little warm-up round. So that content's coming back. And the craziest shit that's ever happened in a sandbagger went down on this trip. So those will be coming out, uh, gee, the next two months? Yeah, August, September. Yeah, right. Pasha, probably about four months. Maybe you, you might get No, a no, Pasha's, uh, I think he's going to drone prison. You know, we'll have to get into that. Oh, well, we did mention Merles is here. We got to say hi, Matt Merley, uh, gambling correspondent. I don't think I saw you since the crap tables Wednesday. Yeah, I mean we came we, we came in really hot, and I got the Vegas voice like the rest of the boys, Detroit voice. But mine is from coaching. The first game, I'm yelling, <laughs> screaming every time. All right, made a save. I was coaching them. But then I, I realized, like, all right, this team's not moving on. So I jumped ship, and I was on Wierenski's bench the last couple of games, just coaching those guys yeah. up, screaming at the refs, everything. So half of it's from screaming for a yo 11 or a hit, <laughs> but a lot of it's from the coaching. Uh, well, I think we might need to bring G on here for the backstory mm-hmm. of Wierenski team and the ball hockey, was, which which kind of became the main event. Right? Yeah, this all began Wednesday. So Wierenski threw in a team, D- Dylan Larkin, Completely ghosted. No show. Just no, a, a straight up no show out of Larks. So Great guy, but just Stevie he just y. he ghosted us. I think Stevie Y maybe a little nervous about well, the whole ball hockey heard, situation. Heard, heard about all the pot here. smoke coming out of the old shoe <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> once I saw the game, I'm like, Larkin should not have been playing in this coming off neck surgery. No, no it was so intense. Are you kidding me? That's true. So what happened was uh, Wednesday night when we're at the tables, we meet a couple guys. And, you know, right away they kind of recognize us. We get talking. They're like, yeah, we're here to play. Nice. What division you in? Or no, I always ask, are you playing ball hockey on your feet or roller hockey? And we're ball hockey. We're actually a professional league or whatever they are. We're the all-star team. We're going to crush everyone in this tournament. 
I'm like, whoa. Actually, what'd you say to him when you first met him about his snout? Oh, man. This guy had a he had a nose like a half-chewed caramel. I tell you what. Vince met him, gave him a big hug. Face. <laughs> There's a guy I know yeah. from my... I go, that's coming from potato so, nose. So Kyle yeah. Quincy's got a buddy he introduced me to way back when, and we'll probably get an Instagram post about it or something, but we call him Shovel Face. And basically, if you looked at it from the side, it looked like his face had been completely caved in, and somebody had chewed off his nose. So... He, he's coming up with a full buttoned up golf shirt saying, I'm going to fucking win this tournament and I'm going to dunk on anybody trying to compete with me. And what's the guy's name? Johnny. It was Rudy. The kid's name was Rudy. No, dude. They were calling him Rudy on Norensky's team, I thought, because he tried so hard like yes. Rudy in the movie. Oh, I was calling him Rudy the whole time. We're going to be Jesus, to dude. You were dogging him but, to his face. This guy was a street dog. Street dog. And he wanted this tournament, and he called it Wednesday at the crap stables where Merle's was, was I don't know, yeah, I mean, cross-eyeing We, we uh, tried telling him, where, dude, there's NHL players yes. in this. And he's like, yeah, I know, but I'm better than them, and we're better than them. And he goes, I don't, I don't care. You don't get it. And he's like, we're coming for them. And I was like, oh, my God. So then I, I meet Wierenski and his brother, and, I'm, and they're like, oh, it's, it's just going to be a fun time. We're out for a cool game. And I'm like, no, man. I'm like, it's going to be really serious. Like, we met a guy that's, like, hunting you down. Like, oh, yeah. be ready. Well, and, and I thought about it. It's like these guys – so impressed like watching this final game we'll get video out there it's, it's actually an unreal game they were nasty I mean they're playing Wierenski other legit hockey players played D1 played at a high level and they know the game a little bit different they, their, their gloves aren't hockey gloves it's a whole different game it's a whole different game but they still have skill yes. and they make sick plays so the shootout moves they were doing where they like tap yeah. it on their leg and do a spinorama well so so they, they squared off in the first round or maybe they were the second game right the second round technically I think it's round robin and it was 2-2 two, two. and next thing you know the, the goalie of the ball hockey team is just chirping everyone Wierenski calling him a pigeon just <laughs> <laughs> enough where they Ron were Ron waxed we're, the back of the leg and, and Steve Alexki played you know every, he played a long time pro yeah, won a Stanley Cup in Pittsburgh too tough prick and he's like there's no fucking around anymore the goalie's talking shit we're gunning for them we'll meet him in the finals so we got to wait until that all kind of boiled down all of a sudden what does Wierenski's team do they called in some meat who was yeah, that guy that Mark? Was he goes we're bringing a body man. tomorrow no cops yeah. drove 45 minutes down 6'3 240 and he goes <laughs> Uh, Merle said, that I think there could be a fight plus 300. So our, our league 300. is kind of like the French league where you can call any fighters. <laughs> Remember, what was the old, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, old uh, yeah. French uh, the Quebec old, league? Yeah, the Quebec Senior League. Oh, yeah, senior Quebec league. Senior league, league. <laughs> where it was a meat fest. Oh. Anybody, they were flying guys in on yeah. private planes. A couple Jesus Pablo games, Escobar just go, yeah, style. You, they were getting paid per game, like a couple thousand per game. Like, yeah, and, then if you, and if you fought off the opening face-off, it was like a uh, $1,500 bonus. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Sean McMorrow played. Hey, I think... Uh, Mer- nasty Morassi yeah. played in it. Him and Bossy. Him and Bossy used to go. They yeah. and I think I think the the fans packed those those buildings. Oh, oh, yeah. You know they're going. They're, 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 they're smoking damn. darts in the ring. No they doubt it's a go back. The they're watching tilts. Yeah, they lo- they didn't care at all. The, check out the Bossy Morassi. Uh, there's like a compilation of all the times they fought. Just. Do, 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 this do, is do. very funny for anyone. Face you gotta, you gotta check out the YouTube. Biz's eyes are literally mm-hmm. shut. You could blind them with floss right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh, we, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, we're having a good time. Having a blast. <laughs> Our voices, as you know, a horse because the Pink Whitney was flowing this weekend throughout Greek Town during Hockey Fest. Yeah, Big thanks to it. them for this mm-hmm. weekend. And wherever you are this summer, make sure you head to your local bar and make sure you order some Pink Whitney. It's the perfect summer shot for you and your friends. And once again, huge thank you to everybody at Pink Whitney in New Amsterdam for sponsoring this weekend. Terrific job. Lots of vodka drunk. So back to Hockey Fest. Whit, did you have any uh, additional stuff? Lisa lit that. Oh, we got to yeah, thank yeah, her. Yeah, I'm, Lisa, I know doing the Lisa's role been role. unbelievable. Wanted, yeah. she, her and her whole team at Barstool. Yeah, but that was just an ad. So, <laughs> No, yeah, Lisa. Live event Lisa, they call her. I actually met Lisa when I got it, got the NHL Network and you know be, became friends with her, really learned what she did. And I think I, I remember saying, oh, you'd be unreal at Barstool. Or she asked me what Barstool was like, and I connected her and Erica. And th- right away, Erica's like, this girl's awesome. Like She knows exactly what, what we're into. She's feeling the same type thing, and... Ever since she's come, she's run all the Barstool Classics. She started, you know, did that with Riggs, and it's moved into such a machine. And then she helps out with all the live event stuff, sets everything up in advance. So you're right. The thank yous matter because all this stuff that went down and all the people who enjoyed the weekend, which we were, like you said, couldn't believe how many came. It's all because, you know, what they're doing prior. So thank you. 
Yeah, the crowd was unreal. I mean, everyone was kind of like Detroit. You know, people kind of look at you across. Yeah, me. You say you're going. <laughs> I was trying to save you that way. And, and we got it. And, and honestly, the, the hospitality was great. I've had a blast. I mean, I'd never been here before. I would definitely come back here for a hockey game, 100%. Imagine uh, if we could have had the Canadians, too. I mean, yeah. Well, unfortunately, Memes couldn't come into the country. He had a visa issue. Of Lots of Canadians couldn't Wait, he here. Said, wait they said they, they said it wasn't a necessity. Said it wasn't a necessity. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, but somehow, somehow, memes. No, somehow like, Pasha got in. No, they're like memes. You used to clip old school on an old meme. You're done. You're not getting in. <laughs> well, I think we gave memes enough ammunition for the next few months, Biz, anyways. And, think, and these I are think... good. These might be good memes for a change. We were just saying it's a different game, Granelli. You know it's a different game when I can actually suit up and play in a oh, hockey tournament. I, 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 missed I, I mean, I don't know like, who starts this. I, I can't believe it. I think I have to. I'm sorry. I missed the, the greatest uh, ball hockey performance oh, yeah. of all time because I had I, – I had to we got. You know, we, 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 we skipped ahead. No, Hold on. Every, Biz did the opening ceremonies of this tournament. Oh, yeah, I did the opening ceremonies and then ass clinched my te- or cheeks uh, all the way back to the hotel to try to let out explosive diarrhea. Now, let me tell you – Everybody here listening knows the first night of a bender, recovering the next morning is the worst. It's always the first. You know, once you get in, like, a vacation mode, as they call it, well, after the opening ceremonies, I just, yeah, it, it didn't sit well with me, and the, I, I ended up missing R.A.'s performance in goal, in goal. Yeah, he needed a little quick nap after, but I, I got to experience it. And you're forgetting out one important part of the opening ceremonies. Biz gives a good speech, gives the mic over to two guys, one of them, Ron Sanko's son, buddy of mine. They crush the Canadian National Anthem. They crush it. Biz said, and now for the um, United States National Anthem, and he's like, ah, uh, where is this guy? And he goes, all right, we're good with that. They I can't go. <laughs> I think well, that was like one of guys on, on Rensky's team text was supposed to that sing I got it. During the speech, there was no, yeah. they were no, it was so early that that team hadn't showed up yet, which we've already talked about. 7.30 starts. <laughs> <laughs> we can make this a running theme. Yeah, no, no chance again. But RA gets in that. It was like, I would say, you didn't start playing until 10.30, right? Probably Whatever. 10, 15, okay. 10, 15. Well, either way, the, the the sun was was on its way up, and we're in the middle of this parking lot. It had to be eighty five already. I'm like, oh, Ra's fucked here. He was loaded all night. And how's he gonna play goalie? And he hasn't played goalie in twenty years. The guy gets in that and stood on his head. He's flying and flapping his leather glove around, making glove saves, kicking out saves. Probably gave up like three goals pretty early. Barstool ties it up, and he starts kicking, keeping them in it. And we have the video. I was like, I just pumping his tires. He he said it since I met him. Yeah, I played ball hockey goal, goalie growing up. And I was like, dude, no, you didn't. Best did, goalie did in you, Charlestown. Did you, though? And and it was pretty sick to watch. So, so. You've, you've seen him on a mini putt course. You're like, I know your athleticism. Yeah, and he told me he mini putted exactly. So I, I I there was no bullshit coming from here. I, I I described it as when the the Pirates pitcher pitched the perfect game on acid, which I, <laughs> that almost happened Saturday morning, I mean, but I couldn't play. Which I don't know how much we could talk about acid on this podcast, given our uh, gambling relationships or, or whatever we're affiliated to, but. That kind of happened on the trip, too. Well, yeah. I can also talk about the feeling. This is a little off subject. The feeling of being on acid, I was not. But the feeling was when Merle's was down to $100 Ooh. the first night when we met Caramel Nose Face. <laughs> Actually, it's Caramel Nose Face Killer. He's like Marshawn on the ice. Can we talk about that run? Are we allowed to talk about that run? Oh, yes. my God. Oh, my God. So this guy gets down to 100 bucks, and we're at roulette. I said, Merle ate black. Cornelli's like, you think eight black, what happens? <laughs> eight black drops. He didn't speak for 20 minutes before that. It says just black eight. That's it. Black eight. <laughs> we bet it. Bang hits. So we just sit there for another 20 minutes. He doesn't say a word again. All of a sudden, he's like, black 17. I'm like, mean girl. I'm like, yep. Go again. Boom. He hits it again. To one. We're Who sprinting was saying around. Who was saying the, the wit. He would only open his mouth just to. To like give out the winner, and then he wouldn't talk for twenty minutes, and then he'd give out another winner. I was sprinting around the casino, and then he hit on black five, six, and then he did it a third time. I, three, I called three. Insane. Insane. said he was going to get naked if the yeah. first one hit when he only had a hundred bucks on eight. You know, the other ten and naked the, jumping the jacks said he couldn't get naked. Yeah, he goes ten naked jumping jacks. <laughs> it hits. He goes bananas. Immediately starts taking off his shirt. The bouncer goes. I mean, the, the dealer says, "No, no, no, sir. You have to leave your clothes on." <laughs> so just that was the beginning of the trip. That night was and, money, and then well, for Mer- me, I Mer- lost went from from buying in for thirty five hundred down to a hundred dollars, up 
ninety five hundred bucks. Yes, yeah, it was great. That was a yeah. run yeah. for the ages. Yeah, great. Wow. You yeah. took the money Lots from me. Know that. Yeah, but I haven't seen yeah. it since Wednesday because I was playing twenty five dollar hands next to these guys, and I couldn't handle the stress of the emotional <laughs> swings. What a run! It was, it was a, awesome. It was, it was, it was so so I so got hosed by That's the anchor. I got hosed by the anchor twice. And I'm not, you know, what? I, I don't think anyone gives a shit listening to like how I lost money. I understand that, but this kid, he's got sixteen. I had I had ace five, the dealer showing a six. Right? I double. I had a big action. No brainer. This kid's got no sixteen. Brainer. He stays. <gasps> right? No. Seven it was, she showed seven. That's what it was. The seven, dealer, yeah. Dealer shows seven, so sixteen. Yep. So he's gotta hit. You have to hit. And he's like, No, no, I can't hit. She ends up wheeling over like a three, a four. She takes like sixteen cards basically. <laughs> and uh, that's the worst. Was, and that's then the that worst kid only had a quarter up. She, 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 she gets she gets nineteen. Just I slip it. over my card to two and I just look at this kid. <laughs> He's like, Man, I wanna play my cards, which I totally understand. It's like the biggest catch twenty two, right? You're in a casino. Here we go. It's somebody's money. You understand you can play however you want. But if you're the anchor on the if table. If you're the fucking anchor, the buddy. Anchor, yeah. The fuck anchor off. makes the moron. night. Eat the fucking cards. You're an anchor. Ask it's, the guy that who has the, the most money up. Like, you know oh, what, what do you want it's me to what, do? Yes, like, yes. You got like three grand up. I got a 25 bucks. Yeah. What do you want me and to I do? Yes, yes, it's, all yes, re- yes. it's all relative, yeah. but it's like, bro, if you're sitting down as a fucking caboose, fucking ri- you need to ri- be a ride or die chick. Yeah. You know, if you ain't a fucking ride, if you ain't looking at the guy with 1500 on the table being like, bro, what am I doing? 1500 do you know? Do you know how anchors became in existence? They hold boats. down boats. They hold down <laughs> ships that can't go anywhere. It, it's it's necessary that that anchor, if it doesn't work, that ship screwed. It's fucked. It's fucked. You control the narrative in a sense of the table. That doesn't make sense. Narrative. No, like it's you, Titanic ship. Yeah, and 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 Iceberg he's just and he's stuff. looking at me. It's just like. That was that was it. You know, I like I said, nobody it's like no, falling nobody asleep cares. in the Rolling Canal. But that that, that happened. That happened. Together. That happened two other times. I had three. I said two. I said three anchor, awful, awful experiences. And I just think blackjack people will understand listening. Like the anchor matters. So yeah. I, I I digress. Merle's out. Thanks for the shout outs. I did hear you coaching us the other day. I did hear you wet every mm-hmm. time. And it, it pumps you up. Biz, I wasn't disappointed you weren't there. I was curious. I'm like, geez, where'd Biz go? Because, like, you did the uh, opening ceremonies, then I figured you'd be there. But I blocked it out. You know, it's like, I ain't going to poke because Biz ain't here. And, oh, uh, well, I think it all worked out. Well, I had, I, I'm telling you, like, there's nothing like having, like, explosive diarrhea <laughs> and with a lack of sleep. And then. <laughs> I'd be lying if I didn't miss the full performance because we did take a 30-minute nap. But in order to, like, get back to the event after having explosive diarrhea and going through that, like, out-of-body experience, basically, like, we were doing... Uh, you told that, me you had to crawl from the toilet like to I was, bed. I, I felt like I was doing ayahuasca. <laughs> that's, ba- <laughs> that's basically how bad it got in the toilet bowl, okay? And um, and we came back, and we got to interact with the crowd and fans all day. That's uh, and I, I don't know what you even how this even came up, but the whole experience in Detroit here it ended up working out so well because it felt like we could talk and, and interact with every single person that was involved with the entire roller hockey and ball hockey experience. And uh, we ended up going the distance, and that was the Friday night where we ended up going to Old Shillelaghs, which <laughs> this place was it, yeah. three levels like. Unreal spot. Yeah, it was it, like getting a little dabble of, can we say, ecstasy on the pod? <laughs> yeah, you're asking, Cannabis. We can just bleep it out or you something. You can say whatever yeah. you want. And then you went to the next level, and then you like yeah. reached fucking Bowser at the top, which me and R.A. RA got into the smoke room. had a room smoking there. coop. It was like a chicken coop, and you could smoke it. Smoke smoke it, you got so I, it was I, like a two-hour sesh. It was I went up there during uh, the, the Saturday afternoon because you watched the games from up at that spot, yeah. right? You guys were in that area just... Like hot box in that thing? Yeah. The entire the time. Chicken coop in there, yeah. <laughs> I was on the second floor. They, I didn't see it one time. These people were handing us oh, homegrown Louis, gorilla fingers. Louisville sluggers. Was, oh, un- and incredible. it just didn't and stop. So the like, next thing you know, we're in this fucking vortex of weed and interacting with some awesome people. And I don't know how we got to the old show. I don't know how we got shot. to this. You, you but got, there was, I think there must have been on a rant. Because you're on some local cannabis now. That's There must have been you know 500 people at the bar. We got to shoot the shit with everyone. Uh, more it more adds on to the full experience of of our time in Detroit. It like I I come here expecting to be like two plastic street hockey nets set up in the road, <laughs> and then I got here and you guys had five rinks set up. It was placed right where we could watch from a bar too. We yep. had the, we had the beer garden going, and I didn't meet one like 
grumpy person. Everyone just had the time of their lives the whole weekend. That's what I said. The thing about our events, not just this one, I don't know anywhere else where you get so much testosterone in one place, but you don't. Like nobody's a dickhead. Usually there's one, and we got a couple of lone wolves who got a little too. Well, that anchor was kind of a, a little, dickhead. But like, but people like no, not even close to a fight. Like I didn't see an argument. Maybe on the on the during the games, maybe, but nothing. Like every, it's just such a fucking mad chill vibe. Granted, eighty percent of the people here probably spliffed out because it's legal here in Michigan. But it was just such a cool vibe, man. It was like you know, usually when it's a hot dog factory like that everywhere, there's some couple dickheads square <laughs> off. No, you don't even like see anything. You didn't even sense yeah. like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you didn't sense anything like that. And I mean, unless something happened, I'm unaware of it. It's like that's that's the vibe we like to convey, and it fucking was splendid this weekend. So when when you said, um, "Wow, we're going to Detroit," like, and I was like, "Why are we going to Detroit?" You know, you, you hear things about the downtown, and like they're they're trying to get better and better, and there's some areas that are so nice, but in the end, we get down here, and everyone that I met said. You know, Detroit doesn't get a lot of stuff like this. Like, it's so it's so great you guys came. So, like, to see them pretty fired up to have an event, like, downtown here for everyone that locally, like, love chiclets. Like, I met a kid who um, never watched hockey, never into hockey. He, like, falls bar stool. So, when COVID hit, like he said, March 20th, 2020, he's like, oh, I'm going to try spitting chiclets. And he finished the most recent episode last week. And he was like one of those kids that just you meet so many people like that. It's the best feeling. It makes you so like you guys used to let it really fly. Yeah, I go. I go. How weird was it at the beginning? He goes, Jesus Christ, you guys were tapped. He goes, you and R A. You and R A. Were talking nonsense, and then Biz came in like a flying. Like what are those things that ninjas throw? Throwing ninja stars. The ninja stars. That was you just coming and cutting everything up. So. But it, yeah, like I, I'm just talking about the city oh, uh, and how hey, good it was. So, uh, some other stories of people that came in to play in the tournament. We got to get to that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Spirit Airlines is the biggest scumbag organization. They host so many competitors in this tournament. Spirit Airlines. I don't know what the hell's going on. No, actually, somebody duct tape one of the people on the flight to a seat. Which I mean, that was Spirit. No, I'm I, talking how they're canceling all their flights. Right, no, like, I, I, but this, right. I think this has a part to do with it, and the fact that like. One of the employees finally said, this is ridiculous how this person's acting. And they whipped out dip, duct tape and duct taped this lunatic to a seat. Yeah, so, he's like, my parents are worth $2 million. Two million. Yeah, and I'm playing <laughs> spirit. I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> I'm like, have a fun I'm next like, few years. <laughs> I'll take, I'm going to take a shit in an aisle if, if, if that's dude, what you get for I, $2 million. <laughs> I just booked a, a flight to Columbia, and that was one of the airlines. And I'm like. No fucking way. Like, there's just certain things. Like, because I, if this happens, then you can only blame yourself for taking I, spirit. And I know people who have are on budgets and have value. Like, you got to f- spend money where you can. But that's, there's just certain companies when you take pot in, you can only blame yourself. Paddling across rather than taking this. Yeah, but that way he can bring all his drugs. So, hey, hey, he's the only guy who brings drugs to Colombia. Hey, listen, listen, Spirit Airlines, biz. You'd pay eight bucks for a flight to Myrtle Beach. Hey, it'd be 75 cents to use the overhead compartment. You'd have to put quarters in. You couldn't even use... They'd charge you for everything. You had to pay to get your seatbelt buckled on Spirit. It's the biggest piece of trash. So the reason we get into it is because there was a team in Orlando. uh, There was a team... L.A. L.A. And then somebody else. They all had spirit flights. San Diego kid. Yes. And they all had spirit flights. They got messages, emails at midnight. Their flights were at 5.45 and 6 a.m. that the flight was canceled. But it ended up working out. They got For California. Orlando guys hopped in a van and drove. Right? Yeah, Marina yeah, they drove, drove from yeah. Marina from Boston. Yeah, but she was guy. working. It's a little different than Chief like Chief drove as well. Yeah, those guys, yeah, awesome. Like that, that's great. They drove, but I'm saying to get your flight canceled that late and just still want to be here and to get in a van and like I don't know what it takes from Orlando. We had people that drove here. Taped. I'd rather wait in line at Space Mountain than do that. We had people that <laughs> drove here from Florida that weren't even playing in the tournament. Just to hang out at the event. Yeah, so, so that was it. Was great. It I mean, was I know cool we're talking everybody. about it a lot, but yeah, it was a weekend for us that it was like a first, right? It was our first event doing the, the ball hockey, like you said. Brad Jones, huge help. He set it all up, but we didn't know how it would go. So I think we're just pretty fired up talking about it and sharing our experiences because all the people who were here and got we got to interact with, they're going to be listening, and so we we loved it. And to every person who probably put money on black, because every time people were saying, we're going black or red at the roulette table, everybody kept saying black. So, you know, at one point, somebody from the tournament put some money on black based on our call. Who gave you the jersey? That USA hockey jersey. Yeah, and, like, I can't even believe I forgot to bring that up. Great call, Murr. Veterans Hockey United. So I met these guys. 
they have all served or are still currently serving in the military. This guy did a couple tours in Afghanistan. He loves hockey. We had a great discussion. He tells me all about his business and what they've started. Not even business. He's just done this. Like He connects veterans and current people serving in the military to men's hockey leagues. So all over the world, wherever people get stationed, all over the country, Europe, he finds guys places to play. And he said, like, the conversation I had with him for when he was on duty and and, and even now and hanging out with these guys is, like, to get your mind off of some of the stuff that they have to go through for 90 minutes. He said it means so much. And all these guys that he's connecting, I was blown away. He gave Biz and I the coolest jerseys. Actually, all three of us, I think. I got my jersey. We'll get a picture of that. I'm bringing it home. So you have to shout out them. They have a website, veteranshockeyunited.com, and just an unreal thing that they're doing. So I was, it's another another group of people you meet. You're just like, this is the best job in the world. No doubt about it. With a few other things I wanted to mention as well. Uh, shout out to Mattress Firm as well. I know that we don't have a set aside after them, but they were huge this weekend. They had uh, the big trailer. I gave a couple mattresses away to a couple of listeners the other day with the hashtag thing. That was pretty fun. Got to see a couple of the nice neighborhoods around here. Uh, also, I want to give a shout-out to the Covington Street Hockey League. Those guys showed up with their own trailer. They had it uh, parked in the back of the parking lot where all the uh, rinks were set up. These guys have a great story. Uh, Covington, Kentucky, right? The the boards at the old arena in Dayton, where the Dayton races of the WHA used to play, they were taking the arena down. The boards was the only thing standing. These guys made phone calls, put up, got money donated, end up driving up. These were the boards. Of the when fr- was this? this was, you know what, like this, the 80s or I, more no, recently? No, I think this was fairly recent. I, okay, didn't actually, okay. I would say within the last 10, 15 okay. years, if I had to guess. But the arena was the very first uh, professional location, the very first professional game Wayne Gretzky ever played on when he was with the Indianapolis Races. His very first game. So like the, one of the guys said it, those boys got Gretzky's juju on them. So they got all this money together, got all these permits, and they brought the boards uh, from – Dayton, Ohio, down to Covington, and set it up in like a like a recreational area. So they have their own street hockey league. Just a really fucking cool yeah, thing to go up. That's and, very cool. and these guys didn't. It wasn't like, hey, buddy, get your pickup truck and go up. They had to like get permits and raise a shitload of money. It was a, it was a big undertaking. So I met those guys. Those guys it was great. There were tons of other league. I know Myrtle Beach. We said something. Florida guys from Seattle. Like and, and shout out to all the Michigan folks too. Like I think seventy five percent of the crowd yeah. probably was within forty five minutes to a couple hours of this place. So uh, I want to give them a shout out as well. Uh, also, we could talk about uh, the the pre. Well, I won't. I won't say what he was. We we, we see a guy come in. We're hanging out in the. Oh had like my a, god! We had like a beer pen. Uh, you, yeah, he had kind of had a drink in this area, so we're hanging out, having a few between games, or whatever. And I look over. And I see a guy with a priest robe on, and he's got gelled up hair. He's handsome. He's got, like, mirrored shades on. I thought on. it was a costume. He got mirrored shades on with the Rangers logo on it. And, like, the night before, we, we had people dressed up as Hulk yep. Hogan, a macho man. So yep. it's, I show, we got some wackos out there. I'm like, oh, somebody's here, you know, dressed in a priest robe. So, and I kind of sit, and he's got a smile on his face, thinking, like, you know, like, uh, this guy's a, a jokester. So I was like, hey, how you doing? I was like, what's up with the bit? He's like. I'm a priest. I was like, no, really. He goes, no, I'm a priest at the church over there. I was like, you fucking hear. I felt like such an... Uh, I goes, I, I feel like such... He's like, don't worry about it. He goes, I love the show, blah, blah, blah. He's like a listener of the show. He's stationed here. And it, funny enough, our Instagram account tweeted up, uh, sent out a video of him skating. And Meme said, when you have... Uh, Pawns at one and sermon at two because he was skating in his robes. He's like, oh, you guys... I had my Instagram years ago. So uh, to Cannon Stein of St. Joseph's Shrine... Father of the, the hood, they call him. Cause well, ask this hood. guy what he said to him. Oh, oh just, it's pretty similar. I just said, what's up, man? Why are you dressed like a priest, dude? He's like, I am a priest. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him knocks. I'm like, that's unreal. He plays men's league one night Whoa. a week, maybe two nights a week. That'll he put you it. on your heels, eh? I go, it's 100 degrees oh. out there. Under Armour can't make you a priest Don't outfit. <laughs> Steven Seagal so, throat shot. Well, I was like, I am a priest. Him, oh, shit. We got to right. get, get him an NBD uh, one of those, you know, nice fitted shirts. Uh, priest. We were talking about that. Like, how have they not created this like uh, Under Armour type material for priests who want to like li- like live in Detroit in the middle of summer where they're not sweating their absolute cojones off? He he had to have been dripping. Oh, yeah. He was looking. He was looking sharp though. He reminded me of an old priest of mine, Father Roy and Con. Roy the Father Jesus. Roy and Co- Ron Ron Coin. Sorry, Father Coin. Real nice guy, really, like, oh, really awesome. to the young kids. So I was like, Father, I goes, oh, my, like, I didn't know what to say at first because I haven't really had a conversation with a priest on it. So I was like, uh, my great aunt was a nun. And I was like, wait a minute. That's like when people come up to me and be like, dude, I played three games in the coast. <laughs> I started laughing. I was like, sorry, dude, that was a terrible thing. But he was a wicked nice guy. And uh, I don't know if you get it. So, so he put our ear on his heels. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, I thought he'd be good of a few. All right, you should go down the street now and do a confession. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, like, oh, I got a, I got a, I got a like, flight in eighteen yeah, hours, I, buddy. I, I didn't, he's like, I didn't. Tell he's you. like, I'll give you the last three months. That's all I'm giving you. I didn't tell you she was a nun and she ran a book on the side. You know, I, I left that out. You know, she taught me about lines and our parlays. Goes without saying. Oh, one last note: the Detroit pizza. You guys had it in the sports book. Right? Really? Sports book in the Greek Town Casino is some of the best pizza I've ever eaten in my life. I don't. Is that Chicago or Detroit style pizza? I'll tell you what. If it's considered it's, deep dish, it's better than anything I've ever had in no, Chicago. It's, it's so Detroit. not only do they suck at pizza in general, they suck at their own stuff worse than a, a Hey, a I'm a sports. Chicago guy. You can hate biz. I'm a Chicago guy. They gave me a broken stick, though. Chicago I deep dish. I would call that a Sicilian slice. Wait, no, Chicago a, deep dish. Exactly Go right over to R.A. Sicilian. Chicago. So I went to – sorry, Merle. Sorry, Merle. I yeah, cut you off. Sorry. I went to Buddy's. Um, Frosty said go up you there. You do that Frosty too much. town for years. And I said go there. So I went to Buddy's. It's classic Detroit style. And I had it. It's good. It's filling. It's I like New York, Northeast, whatever, Boston, Philly style better. But it's better than Chicago. So I tweeted that. I had every little wine bag from Chicago. Like, oh, we don't eat that there. It's like, dude, it's called Chicago fucking style pizza. Whether you eat it not there or not, it's – that's what it's fucking known as. So, Twitter people getting in our race. Oh, fucking. And even White Sox Dave's like, grinds my White Sox Dave's like nobody, nobody here eats that stuff. I'm like, Dave, I'm not saying you eat. I'm saying it's that's the fucking We have to transition like, oh. this into grind my gears. Because you were you were bitching about the Guardians, the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, it's like that. Yeah, we'll save that for later. We got we got some other shit to oh, get sure. to before we get me bitching about 20 things. I know you think you like to go off on tangents, biz, but I don't know. I like to try to keep the fucking focus. Yeah, Ari's the guy who's going to drive the bus. Drive Especially the bus. on a night like Actually, tonight. I think we called the other night. Who was I talking to? He said, we got to stop calling it the driving the bus. I, th- I like calling a quarterback on the power play a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be cool with that. <laughs> coordinating uh, I'm, the I'm, blo- I'm, I'm, coordinating you're driving the bus. The you're, driving, you're driving me on the bus, and I'm the quarterback of the power play getting off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> all righty then. Oh uh, fuck! All right, don't uh, be all sensitive. Oh, I'm just busting balls. Fucking sensitive, my dick. second unit power play. I'll settle for that. How about that? <laughs> never, never step foot on the ice when it really. You get matters. the last thirty seconds. You could have just really given it back to me there. All right. You get the last thirty seconds yeah. and like it. <laughs> all right, boys. Uh, any final thoughts on Detroit before you get? Th- no, we're in a lot of transactions. You're not fucking zoo bomb. All right, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Barstool team needs to get better next year. Yeah, Barstool team stunk. Get better. And shout out to Scott Darling for coming and playing. Oh, yeah, that Dallas. Team. That's right, too. Good good call, G. Yeah, Scott Darling come out and played with us. Uh, You're not Zoo Bob, buddy. Oh, dude, we didn't even... We Actually, dude, how the fuck we gloss over? I throw it to him. He's so whacked. He doesn't throw... You you played that the second day. That's why we were saying... Talk about old Shillelagh, got- dude. Uh, my ribs... I. Did something I could? I definitely couldn't play the next day. There was no way I could have thrown myself in the concrete. I played goalie. So it wasn't, this came in. I played goalie. It wasn't pretty, and 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 we were done. And at that point, it came, became all about the fans, the interaction, and getting to experience that final game between Rorensky and fucking half chewed caramel face in the finals of that ball hockey because we probably had what about a thousand people watching and dialed in I was wondering yeah. how many people were there. yeah I'd say so we had like 5,000 on Instagram live as well yeah it was so definitely hard. like rose deep and just to see them go ahead Ari I'm sorry we just well, they time. brought that meat no, no. in they brought in that big yes. meat and he goes and hits that kid right away into the boards all of a sudden, the puck pops from him. That kid scores right away. And then Rensky comes over complaining about how long his stick was. Boom, he, the kid scores again. He, and they, they got up 3 nothing on him right away. He Jam said, he, said jab. he tapped me on the shoulder and goes, look how long his stick is. As I turned my head around to look at it, he was sniping number two. Half-chewed caramel? Yes. And then he was <laughs> celebrating like in their face. I'm like, oh, my God, this kid is – that's what he said. He's like Marchant. But – Wierenski's team came back in like this most ridiculous fashion with that many people watching and me and Merle's kind of coaching. I was actually, I was like, this is why coaching would be really fun. It was, I mean, I was just opening the we door for those guys. Hey, but, they weren't I'm calling you coaching. Us. We were just talking to each other and I was still like, but you fired can't up. gamble. Yeah. But you can't gamble. No. It'd, be, it'd be fun if you could coach and guy. gamble, yeah. though. <laughs> oh, no, now we're talking. Yeah. That's the next wave. That's the next, Oof. that's the future. Uh, also, too, shout out to all the local uh, independent media who showed up, too. A lot of, like, non bostel people yep. came to take pictures and videos and stuff. So, pretty good stuff we were, sh- we were sharing online. So, all right, boys. When Simply Safe Home Security founders Chad and Eleanor Lawrence designed their first security system in their kitchen, they did it for a very personal reason. Their friends had just had their home broken into. They were struggling to find a security system that was simple to set up and would make them feel safe again. Making people feel safe is what Simply Safe has been doing ever since that moment 15 years ago. And Simply Safe makes it just so easy. It takes about two minutes to customize the system on their website. 
at simplysafe.com slash chicklets. I'm not sure it's easier customizing the system or setting it up, but it's so easy, even I can do it. Simply Safe is highly trained security experts ready whenever you need them, whether that's during a fire, a burglary, a medical emergency, or even just when you're setting up the system. There's always someone there who has your back to keep you safe and make you feel safe. And our listeners, you guys can save 20% off your first I'm sorry, your first Simply Safe security system and get your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service. Just visit simplysafe.com slash chicklets to customize your system and start protecting your home and family. That's simplysafe.com slash chicklets. Well, Biz, speaking of locking things up, Edmonton signed Darnell Nurse to an eight-year, $74 million extension. It's a 9.25 AAV. It expires after the 30 season. He would have been a UFA after next season. He's going to play it this year at $5.6 million. 26 years old. Last year, he had 16 goals, 20 assists, and 56 games. He's got a full no-move clause through the contract and a modified no-trade in the last three. What? You're the D guy. We always go to you first. Yes. Was this more than you expected for Donnell Nurse? Um, yeah, I think everyone probably expected a little bit less, but then once you saw these deals being signed by yeah. um, Dougie Hamilton and Seth Jones and Wierenski, it's we talk all the time, if you need a guy to come to Edmonton, you got to overpay, right? He's also He's also had a fantastic last few years in terms of like he gets better every yeah. single season so no doubt in my mind I think it's an overpay but that's what happens now everyone that was I saw bitching online and obviously when these big deals come out all you see is comments overpay overpay it's like obviously that's what everyone thinks about all the money given out now unless it's McDavid McCann McCarr like there's few players everyone else it's overpay so he had a really high shooting percentage so there's like oh that's gonna come down right he's not gonna get 16 goals again but I look at him his skating's unreal. One of the best skating defensemen in the league. So in terms of like the most important aspect for defensemen nowadays, he's got that. You know he's always going to be able to be up in the play. People bitch. Like he has that many points. He's with McDavid. All right, well, he's going to be on his team the next eight he's years, whatever it is. A consistent 25 minutes every single night. Every night. And here's the thing. This guy is tough as shit. Tall. Have you seen him fight? I mean, anyone on here who hasn't, YouTube, I'm like, you're not even just getting a full-blown offensive. You're like, getting a Shea Weber. Yeah. A yeah, guy in front I, of him, and, and he's now, gonna fucking give you a, a cross check. He'll fucking go toe to toe with any other team's any, heavyweight. I think anyone. Yeah, he'll fight anyone. If, if, if it had to come down to Reeves, he's like, yeah, we're fucking going. Let's go. But he doesn't need to. He's kind of like that that Chris Pronger type in a sense of like he's playing it in a mean style. And 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 when push comes to shove, it's gonna be I'm gonna fucking win you in the corner, motherfucker. Yeah. And he's a cultural guy. <laughs> No, it's how it's got. It's hey, buddy. It's a it's a man's game still, and that in the cup finals and all of it, it's, yeah. it's proven time over time. He's got that little spike, extra spice. And listen, nine and a half. You're probably like, oh fuck, yeah, that's a lot of money. That's what the market's saying right now for premium defensemen. And if you're the Edmonton Edmonton Oilers, you should be kissing his feet at the fact <laughs> he'd be willing to even stay in that fucking city and help you guys win win something if you even do. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, is that he, a polite way of putting it or what? He wanted, he, he uh, you know, I'm an Oilers guy. They all hated me, but I'm an <laughs> Oilers guy. They all, they all, they all will see, right, that he's only going to continue to get better, I think. They love him. And in you the say Shea too. Weber, and you mean in terms of the, me, the, the toughness and how mean he is. Now, I know if, if, if Connor McDavid's looking at a few guys in the locker room, who am I going to war with? He's looking over at Darnold. Man, their their core is is McDavid, Dreitzel, um, the, the new Hyman contract, Nugent Hopkins, and Nurse. That's their five guys, right? You know, you need to get a goalie in terms of long term, and but but still, it's just I, I, you want to keep your best players. It's been hard. Your core, and you just lost Adam Larson. And you know that might affect him a little bit, right? And if he does, if he's not playing with him, I don't know if he played with him all the time last year. I'm not going to pretend I know that, but fuck, <laughs> I just couldn't believe. We're not insiders. I couldn't believe the negativity. I couldn't believe it because I, I could, but I also like look at it. He's not like a one one style type player, one one trick pony. No, so he ain't. I, I like him. I think he'd make Canada's Olympic team if they go to uh, Beijing, if the NHL players end up going. So. That, that's what you got to get paid, like you said. So I, I think it's a good thing for the Oilers, and they realize they got to do this to keep guys. And they're right behind Winnipeg as far as, like, all their moves. I'm excited to see what they can do in the next year or two. Smitty's got to be good again. Smitty's got to put on a performance, and that's what I would say have. it's an overpay just because he's not the top guy in the power play. If I'm going to pay my D $9 yeah, but million, that's what you got Tyson Berry there for. But him. what he brings is the toughness. And that's maybe what the thing- that's what Connor wanted. Connor's definitely calling some shots there. Has he, to be. And it's... 
you're going to re- like you need protection. Like Sydney never had any protection. He took some hits that he probably shouldn't have hit. You guys have talked about that before. Ooh, wow. Now you got some. You oh, got I some. Played fucking fifteen games already. Like, you got some meat how there. Much, what do you want me to like, do, man? Something like guys are going to think twice before running Connor, knowing that Nurse is back. Hundred yeah. percent. Him and Ka- between him and Cassian, I think that's all the modern day toughness you need. You don't need like maybe a little bit more. Maybe you get a, a guy in the fourth line, mix it up a little bit. I think fuck if if, if you if you were smart enough, you'd figure it out. If you're a guy in the minors, they're saying, "Hey, I'll turn on the meat. Yeah. <laughs> Let's crank it up and chip it in, chip it out, fucking muck it up on the fourth line. Maybe That's get how a ring you got or there, two, buddy. That's how you did it." <laughs> Uh, before we get to the other signs, we haven't, of course, per usual, mentioned our guest yet. We'll bring him on shortly. Uh, Kevin Weeks joined us yeah. in New York a few weeks ago. Good awesome conversation. It goes all over the place, about, but gets into him being an actual insider, unlike us, uh, his career. Tons of good stuff, but we'll get to that shortly. Just we did him uh, years ago before Biz was on the pot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last time he was on was, yeah, I think four years ago. It might have been three or four years. It was too long, so it was great to get Weeksy back in studio. Uh, a couple other big signings. The Islanders signed restricted free agent defenseman Adam Pellick. Oh. Eight years, $46 Bar-goon. million dollar deal. Lou getting it done. Another Bargoon. Lou getting it done at $5.75 million AAV. Uh, he's got a no-trade clause from 23 through 25, then a modified no-trade for the last four years of the deal. Uh, 14 points in 56 games last year for the 27-year-old. But he's not all about points. He's just a solid, dependable, really good two-way defender. Yeah, he, he and that could be fam- tremendous value in a he couple He held his family kidnapped. That's a, that's the only that's the only explanation for that contract. No, Lou, Lou just he's a mastermind. Put him in. A, he's a mastermind. Like what do you call those the, the interrogation rooms? You think he puts him in one of those before he signs them? <laughs> I think that he just he also had a guy that was a little bit behind in terms of negotiating with like big numbers in his past. Like he's never sure. put up offensive big numbers. Sure. But no doubt. If the oil, if there was a, a faction of Oilers fans who right away saw Darnell Nurse's deal and were like, "Are you kidding me? We gave him that much." The same amount of Islanders fans were like, "What? That's all we had to pay Pellich." We were with our boy Straight Frankie Morelli, Islanders cranking their cocks off. To oh, they, he was like, "Can you believe we only got him for that much?" And yeah. I was telling him, "I'm like, yeah, but he didn't. You know, he didn't have huge numbers to get a lot more." Like, and he's like, "I know, but but now if he starts playing power play, like maybe he could." And there was moments actually he looks way better offensively than he's ever given. Yeah, you know, that Noah Dobson right it's a high pick he's nasty offensively he could be a, the first power play guy but yeah this guy's skating we keep saying everyone like nurse gets better this kid he continues to do the same exact thing like this if, year was the first year everyone's like whoa if he didn't progress at all at this point you're still looking at a bargain and if, if yeah if he came if, if, he if, if, this you're, player, saying, if yes. you're saying there's an upside to it it's like oh my goodness here's lou lamarillo's another another and Paul Mary's just waiting. You know Paul Mary's resigning there, but nothing's come out yet. So it's just like Lou's like, I'll get to you later, bud. <laughs> Parisi, too. <laughs> Lou knows what he's doing. Can't question Lou. Siri. Siri has a Lou Lamarillo voice, but it's only for prospects and people who are signed within the organization. It comes through. Uh, Maybe is that you, actually a funny joke, my bitch? For funny, one time, everything's funny coming you out might, of you right you now. You might have a broken rib already because it hurts to breathe. You told me too, dude. Honestly, that it hurt more today than yesterday. And like, I first thing I thought might have been like one of those hidden muscles you don't, you don't necessarily see, but you have. But then like today, it's like because I don't. I did kind of throw myself out there a little bit. So you were well, Dominic Hasek already. If it hurts, if it hurts, two more days, I'll get it. His so. his plate goal, he wouldn't go down. Hit up his insurance company. What? Hit up his insurance company. Trying to get his I mean, next. That's, his, that's what it's his, for. His, cl- <laughs> his claim is like, yeah, I broke my patella tendon. They're like, oh, we got my right go. nostril. <laughs> no, if I was and uh, my taste if, buds from if, stripping the acid. If I was still, if I was still working for the city, I'd go. I would have. Fl- I'd fly home tomorrow and like I'd walk and work with like a hoodie sweatshirt at the back to us, and no one could see me. Then slide on water. I'm like, oh, I, I broke my ribs. <laughs> Make sure you get paid. The fake like, video. Luck. All right, did you, did I you can know? tell you guys a great story about that faking. Uh, we had to do it in college for a guy. So we we might have been out, and then we got into a, he might have gotten into a little tussle out of town at the bar. So he broke his hand, but we could never like you couldn't tell anybody that because he could lose his scholarship. Oh, yeah. The coach would kill all of us, you know. So we come back. He has to suck it up from Saturday night till Monday afternoon when we start doing a team workout, and we we're using medicine balls. So he had to sit there with a broken hand waiting, and then when one of us oh. threw the medicine ball to him, he like fakes, like hits it. He's like, oh, my hand, my hand. I broke my hand. Goes to the emergency room, gets it all done up, misses first two months of the year. 
nobody ever found out about it. Like, there was like four or five of us that knew about it. We kept it a secret the whole year. At the end of the season, we told the coach. He's like, you assholes. <laughs> but that was a good one. Hey, you, you get the strength yeah. coach fired for doing a drill. That's being a team hand. player, though, man. Yeah. You got to cover up for that guy. Yeah. That's that's I mean, like that's the, what you have that's to do. Like the late... has to be NHL stories of just getting to the rink the next I mean, day and getting My only the one's yeah. like the, the, the guy bringing out your gitch bag because you're late, so you can put the, your gitch on, yeah. and the coach won't know you were late. But that's a... Faking the old uh, hand injury. Yeah, was, I think Terry cool. Ryan told the story about that when he lost his teeth, and and he lost his insurance, so they weren't going to pay for his teeth. So he like faked it in the minors, or he might even got him knocked out. Oh, he did bar. it himself. He did it himself after with like a skate. Yeah. The, no. Oh yeah, he's yeah. That's savage. Uh, Seattle Kraken not done yet because they signed they doing? restricted free agent Vince Dunn to a two-year, $8 million deal. They, of course, claimed him from St. Louis in the expansion draft. Uh, they also signed unrestricted free agent forward Marcus Johansson to a one-year, $1.5 million deal. He'll be 31 when the season starts. That could be a value deal. Uh, Vince Dunn, you surprised at that number? I mean, Okay, so I kind of look at Vince Dunn like a, like a Brandon Montour. So I played, um, I, I I think I've seen enough of him in the American League and then him come up to the NHL to St. Louis. And, you know, sometimes you're like, okay, yeah, this guy's going to be able to take the next leap. And same with Brendan Montour when he was out with Anaheim. That's where he started, oh, right? Yeah, then he, he ended up in Buffalo. It's and like, then, right. And, and it, yeah, and it, it kind of derailed him. But he's yeah. kind of like that smooth skating, offensive type defenseman where, yeah, I think this guy – he might put up Tyson Berry numbers all of a sudden, might be able to snap it around, depending on but depending on the situation that he's in. So for for two years at four million a year, I think it's a good deal. Um, I don't. I, I I'm interested to see if he can take that next step because I don't think he ever got to be that guy in St. Louis. Yeah, he's gonna he he's gonna be like. <clears throat> Who got to uh, Vegas and just – who am I thinking? Like, Theodore. Sh- th- yeah, I mean – well, He was in the mix. Theodore, but he, he had the chance. Boom, he went to Vegas, and he's just getting to play, and Dunn will get that chance he never got. It was it Louis. was Theodore, Montour, and then one other defenseman in the – Schmidt? Th- there was a couple in the Anaheim system where you're kind of like, oh, oh fuck. They yeah, they make, had a couple Swedish guys a, that were really good there. They got to make a there. decision here. And who's Fowler gonna, was older, and he had already gotten paid. Well, right? Fowler and that, I think mm. Manson was one of the guys they also protected. I wasn't sure. Maybe there might be one other name in there. But regard, it's like, fuck, is it? Can this guy kind of be the guy? Or I think in, 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 in with the Seattle, I think he's going to have that opportunity yeah. where it's, you know. But yeah, I, I think, think because what you're saying in terms of maybe a little bit of inconsistency is it's probably why, you know, he doesn't get a longer deal from them. Or maybe he even wanted two years. I shouldn't say that the, that was the case, but they probably looked at it like, we're not going to give this guy a five year deal. No. Right now. We're going to see what we got. No. You also got the winning pedigree, too, which you can't get enough of that in a locker room when you're starting an experience. And, and that's team. where you kind of value is, like, what type of impact did he have on that that Stanley Cup win? And, like, it's like, yeah, he was he was a factor for sure. But I think that in the hockey world is over, or, always going to get overpaid. Now it's a case of, like, hey, we, you, we actually need you to be part of – I don't want – maybe not the core, but we need you to bring, be a, a bigger piece than a definitely – Definitely than you what you were in St. Louis. I mean, you think of the names on that St. Louis Cup. I mean, Dunn's at the, he's on the lower tier of that list, and that's not taking anything away from any Stanley Cup winner. But am I crazy here? Well, that's what now he can go to Seattle, and like we talk about him, the power play. Now maybe he's the top guy on that power play, and that's just points all day. Like, right, and that's his and that role. And, that's what he's and then doing. he's going to get that confidence, and he's just going to run with it. It's like those Vegas guys. They got there. They got to play a little more. They got the confidence. You guys know when you played. If you get confident and you're on a run, it's the best. If you're if you get so the, the craps there, yeah, it's exactly like gambling. If when you get put in a spot, if you get put in a spot and you start doing well, and you're like, oh my god, like no one's going anywhere here. Like I, I'm going to be here if I continue to do this. That that's been the case for guys in Vegas. Now, granted, they've switched their lineups. It seems quite often, but at least the, if guys are getting paid. Is more more than anything what I'm saying. All right, boys. A bunch of other signs here. I'll rattle them off if you want to chime in. Just chime in. Uh, Colorado signed the unrestricted free agent defenseman Ryan Murray, one year, two million dollar deal. Uh, St. Louis also signed a pair of restricted free agent forwards: uh, Jordan Cairo, two years, five point six. I like that guy. Zach that guy Sanford, flies. fucking player, big boy, could skate. That's a, what, what was two, his AAV? Uh, two uh, two point eight AAV. Yeah. Ooh. That could be nice. St. Louis is looking like they're going to be ready to go again. Yes, uh, Zach Sanford, one year, two million. Uh, Ottawa signed uh, RFA defenseman Victor Mite, one year, one point two mil. Shock signed RFA goalie Aiden Hill, two years, four point three five mil. 
I'm uh, Nash- telling you. Yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, stop. Uh-oh. No, oh. fuck. Hey, hey, he's not on the Coyotes anymore. I don't need to stroke him off. I'm not playing hometown favorites. But I'm saying is I liked what I saw. 6'5", great pedigree, incredible wingspan, has a fucking a massive competitive drive. I'm saying is yeah, he could be, if he, he could pops be nice. off and he becomes a top 15 goalie in the league. Surprised. Don't be surprised, folks. I, I like it. That's a good call. It's a call. I like it. Uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Uh, Nashville signs RFA defenseman Dante Fabro, two years, 4.8 mil. Uh, Jersey signs RFA forward Igor Sharangovich, two years, 4 mil. They also brought in Thomas Tatar at two years, 9 mil, 4.5 AAV. For he, you know, he got shriveled by Montreal. They didn't. He wasn't in the plans the entire playoffs pretty much, right? But... It's way. happened in Detroit, and, you know, and he was in Vegas, correct? So it, I think he still has skill. I think maybe teams get a little fed up that it's just not much away from the puck, and if he's not really producing offensively, then he's not in the lineup. But he still will at least add some skill level to Jersey, who, who doesn't exactly like score in bunches, or they haven't. All right, what, what's he making a year? Uh so Tata's going to make 4.5 a year for the next Yeah, that's years. what I was surprised at. I'm like, four and a half for a guy who got shriveled away Let's from... Let's look at his numbers. But uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, look, I'm looking at the market and I'm saying, wait, a guy who like they, they, they were basically paying this amount of money to not have play for them in Montreal who was having success, what's the problem here? What am I not seeing? If, if, if it's a complete misusage and a guy who's not... No going to flourish in that type of system as far as a defensive style, but but when I see four and a half million in this market for a guy who was shriveled away from a, a playoff contender, like you, like there's got to be question I know, marks. I know, but listen, this goes back to eighteen nineteen Montreal since he got there. Okay, eighty games, fifty eight points, twenty five goals. Okay, if that's four and a half right there. The year before, sixty eight games, sixty one points, okay. twenty two oh, goals. That's a bargain. And this past year, fifty games, thirty points. He went ten and twenty. So, I he think he had it, his off year, and they shriveled him in playoffs. And and, 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 he's not and good somebody defensively. and, 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 and like, somebody was like, you know what? Like, you know, this, no is a, this is a good value at this point. Yeah, like right. he still is showing that he can produce. Okay, just had a little bit of an off year then. Yeah. Or an off playoff where they didn't need him or want him. And then Berger. He's only 30, too. I thought he was older for some reason, but he's not. Uh, what else? Uh, Pittsburgh signs RFA forward Zach Aston Reese, one year, 1.725 mil. Uh, Chicago signs forward Brandon Hagel, three years, 4.5 mil. And uh, other restricted free agents looking at arbitration unless they come to a deal. Uh, names of note Ross Colton, Tampa Bay, Andrew Kopp, Winnipeg. Neil Pionk, Winnipeg, uh, UC Saros, Nashville, probably the biggest name on the list. Uh, Jacob Rana on Detroit and Nikita Zadorov, Calgary. Of course, he hasn't played a game for them yet, but he is their property and so he we, is RFA. We, so you bring up Andrew Kopp. We got to do two sandbaggers here, like I mentioned. The first was with Wierenski and Andrew Kopp. He, they both played at Michigan together, and, and Kopp is a guy who... <laughs> biz. <laughs> We're driving. We're driving. I'm to eat the, this one. We're folks, driving yeah. the sandbagger. Me, Merles, and Biz he says, oh, "I think, I think this is the first AHL we've had on a sandbagger." <laughs> we hockey DB him. He's got more games played than I ever had, and last year had 15 goals. <laughs> And he should be fucking making a, a nice payday so, here yeah. pretty soon. So he he's gone to arbitration once already, once already, and I'm talking to him, and he might go again. He's like, I don't want to do it again. No, right? it's tough. We've talked about this a bunch, but Just small teams- horn in the shower, boys don't like him in the locker room. <laughs> Terrible haircuts. Yeah, we don't like his clothes. Any, anything they can Grumpy say about him. He doesn't you. have his coffee. <laughs> doesn't flush. But but his numbers, man, like. Merle, Merle's was betting him to score first goal this year, right? He yeah, had a couple no, they, of those. He was, he was a guy they were um, – everybody talks about their top. So he was a guy that was kind of going in and out of there and just like you put Dip him there. And dive. And great things were happening every time he was on the ice. He was starting off the game scoring all the time. And I, I had him bet one time to score the first goal, like 18 plus 1,800 or something. He scores. I start doing the laps around the living room, fist pumping. <laughs> Oh, offsides, coaches oh, challenge. No, listen, no, like, pull it back. They unbelievable. Uh, like the seventeenth cup next game. Oh yeah, and of course. Well, of course. Like two nights later, he scores the opening goal when I when I don't put any action on it. It's like who was offside? That's what he was asking me. I couldn't remember exactly who it was, but Definitely it wasn't stasny. him. It wasn't I wonder, him. I wonder, it was if, I wonder if as a, as a player when you're when you're at the table with the fucking the management saying like, remember when that motherfucker went offside? <laughs> that guy you signed on that contract, and it should have been my goal. Yeah. That happened to me in 2017. First game of the cup. Remember Subban scored, 
And they called it back, and they didn't even have conclusive evidence. Oh, cost me about oh, five times. Oh, grind my gears. Put it on my gears. Grind my gears. Uh, all right, boys. Well, there's not much worse than looking for a job and the accompanying stress, the applications, the ghostings, the monotony. Not fun. Zip Recruiter knows that the general experience of looking for a job is pretty sucky. That's why they figured out a way to make it unsucky. When you sign up at ZipRecruiter.com slash easy, you can create a free profile. Then you get matched to great jobs, plus a lot more. ZipRecruiter will proactively pitch your profile to employers whose jobs match your experience. Unlike with other job sites, if an actual person from the company really likes what they see, they can personally invite you to apply to their job. Candidates who are invited to apply on ZipRecruiter are nearly three times as likely to get hired. Plus, if you like the job, you can apply to it and many others with just one click. It's that easy. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one job-rated site in the U.S. So sign up for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash easy today and experience the better way to find a job. Once again, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash easy right now to sign up absolutely free and put ZipRecruiter to work for you. And now we're going to send it over to our pal, Kevin Weeks. Well, it's been way too long since we've had our next guest back on the show. He was the Florida Panthers' second-round pick at the 93 draft and went on to play 11 NHL seasons for seven different clubs. He's currently calling the Stanley Cup on the NHL Network's international broadcast. And per the New York Post, you'll see him as a studio and game analyst on ESPN start next season. Thanks so much for coming in to see us, Kevin Weeks. How we been, Weeksy? Fellas, thank you guys so much for having me, man. I'm pumped to be here. Thanks, this boys. This has been a long time. Thank I had you. No, yeah. I, four I, years. Yeah, thank before you. Biz was on the show. So to hear that, that, that feels like a different lifetime. So thank you for joining us. And it's funny, RA mentions that you're doing the international broadcast and doing the color commentating. That's when we first met. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were doing the, you'd do the, the West Coast Hockey Night in Canada color. I thought you were great at that. And then you've gone to the in-studio uh, analyst position. And what do you like most? Are you looking forward to getting back into the color? Thank you. I, I like them both because I feel they both kind of feed each other. You know, yeah, you always have to be in the, the rink. Game. Yeah, and you guys know that. You always have to be in the rink. The players are the product. So you always have to be around the rink, be in contact with the players, with the trainers, with the equipment managers, everybody. And that helps by being in the game. But also, too, there's little nuances that you see being in the building. You know that. These guys are so good, and these women are so good that play the sport. And some some of it gets missed when you're in the studio. As eagle eyes we think we are, they're just little nuances that you can't pick up if you're not in the building. So I feel like the two kind of work well in tandem for me. Not only being in the building, but when you're up top, too, you see everything. That's game, a whole different. That's totally. why every analyst, the game's Bird's so eye. easy, guys. It's oh, yeah. Pretty, yeah you, you got 10 minutes to make a play. Totally. Have okay. you ever done Between the Benches? I have. I did that for ESPN during World Cup. And truth be told, since this is released now, they asked me if I'd ever done Between the Benches. And Hockey Night in Canada, I'd never done Between the Benches. But our producer at World Cup, he's like, hey, have you done Between the I'm like, yeah, man, I'm good. <laughs> no problem. Let's go. I'm, I'm good. Let's roll. So it was, honestly, but that's a different level because you're so close to it. Yeah. And, but that's a little bit more natural, as you guys can, you know, you can relate to, because we're used to being at ice level, either on the ice or, or on the bench. In a weird way, though, with your question, when I first started doing those games out west for Hockey Night, being at that bird's eye view up in the top of the Saddle Dome or Rexall or wherever it was, wherever the West Coast game yeah. was, it's a different perspective. It's a completely different perspective. So between the benches was challenging but fun. I loved it. And hearing cool. the guys, sorry, to, you can go ahead, Biz, after this, but hearing the guys go back and forth, that's what I would love to, <laughs> to experience yep. is the shit talk and how angry guys get. And that's what's cool about the in between the benches. Totally. Position. When, when you were a player towards the end, did you have any idea that you were going to get into media? And were you always a guy who was around the rink absorbing everything that was going on? You know, it's funny. I was always, I've always been a rink rat since I was a kid. I never want to leave the rink. And I played with older players, but I never wanted to leave the rink. So my dad was always really cool that way. I'm like, no, I want to watch the Pee Wee team. Okay, the minor Bantam team. Okay, the Bantam team. Okay, the midget team. And I was always like rink rat kid. So this kind of worked itself out naturally that way. But in playing, you get towards the end of your career, you start becoming, in my case, I became a backup. And I didn't really play my last two years in Jersey. I think I played 20 games my, my last year, maybe seven the year before. You play with Marty Brodeur. You, you know, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's no net. You know, there's no net. It's his net, understandably so. And, but what was really cool about that is you get to see the boys. You get to be around them more. There was a little less pressure in a sense, but it made my understanding of the game even deeper than it already was. And 
you know, some of the guys, some of my teammates would probably joke and say that I was always commentating on the bench anyway when I wasn't in the net, right? So you're chirping, mm-hmm. you're trying to encourage guys. You just want to add value. You're, if you're a you're vocal playing, guy. Yeah, if you're not yeah. playing, Do you something. don't want to be a lump. And you still want to be a really good team Just guy. Just tire pumping everybody exactly. on the way off. Doors yeah, yeah. never totally. not open. Exactly. Exactly. You don't want to be that like that suck that's on the bench that just sucks the energy out of the group. You never right, want right. to be that. And I think that's something for a lot of young girls and boys that are listening. You always want to be the alpha and be in the net. But there's only one net at a time. And if you're not, you've got to try to find ways to contribute to your team. And then, and then, like when you ended up getting into it, were you nervous on camera? Was there a, was there a process, or were you always that guy when you were getting interviewed, even when you were playing? Like mm-hmm. you loved that aspect of being on camera. Okay, so what's? I was certainly nervous to an extent, but here's the thing: when I first went to the O and I first went to Owen Sound, CBC was doing this thing called the Fifth Estate. They still have it, and they were doing this investigative show on young prospects that are going to either junior or, or going to play college. So. You can imagine me going up to Owen Sound. My dad brings me up. My boy Painter, who played in the minors. Shout out to Painter, assistant coach for, uh, you know, Painter, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo Sabres uh, ECHL team in Cincy with Matty Thomas as their head coach. But Painter and I go up there, and, you know, I'm supposed to be a top prospect. We already have Storzy. We already have Jamie Storr, who's a future first round pick. So they already drafted Storzy. He's half Japanese, half Hungarian. I'm Caribbean black. So we already have this these two, like, Visible minority goalies already to start in Owen Sound, right? So, so anyway, I get up there, but this fifth estate was, was following me the whole time as they're shooting this feature. So I kind of became very comfortable with the camera, but that probably went over well. I come in in Jordans. It's Owen Sound. I'm oh, rocking yeah. Jordans. <laughs> I got an Air <laughs> Jordan hat on. You. <laughs> yeah, I got an Air Jordan hat on, and I come in to, to training camp, and this camera crew from CBC is in behind me. And it wasn't – Anything grand Was that your first me? year in Owen Sound? That was my rookie yeah, year. Yeah, so like, who is this that guy? That was my rookie whoa, year. Whoa, money bags <laughs> Honestly, yeah. that was my rookie year. And listen, we're from Scarborough. My parents are immigrant parents, work exceptionally hard, mom and dad. Like, look, it's not like that. But this camp, so these guys are like, who's this guy coming in here? <laughs> but pretty quickly, and luckily, I had one of my teammates from minor hockey from Toronto Red Wings, Luigi Kelchi, who played over in the DL, and he's in Germany now still who was great with me. I billeted with him, and he was there before I got there. And then Storzy and I became close. Andrew Burnett, Scott Walker, Wayne Primo. Like, we had all these players that on our team. a squad, huh? We had a squad. And everybody was really cool and kind of welcoming, so that kind of went away. But carry that forward, though, Biz. So I'm doing Hockey Night in Canada, and we were in Edmonton for one of your games. Look at look at look at <laughs> Wits over, in the look, look at Wits scratching his eyebrow. So we're in Edmonton, okay? And it was one of my first shows. So I know I told you guys before I came in here. I'm Sergey Sweateroff. I sweat all the time. <laughs> oh, buddy. Bro, you know the rags here. This guy's the very le- This guy's very leaking. Leaking. Yeah, totally, totally. That's Elvis why you were, That's why you lied about between the benches so you <laughs> yeah, didn't exactly. have to deal with that uh, that heat. Yeah, the heat <laughs> exactly. in Calgary when they turn the score the score the goal horn, they Bro, put the, the flames exactly, on. Exactly, exactly. So listen, so here's a good my girls from Calgary too and her family, shout out to them, but here here's the crazy thing. So before the game, like at the pregame skate at Rexall, you know that acrylic glass room that they had by your yes. by your dressing room there? Yes. So as you guys are all set up here, I go in there for the pregame skate, I'm with my play by play guy, they're like, Yeah, post game, you and Scott Oak are gonna be doing after hours from in there. I'm like, in where? They're it's like, like in, where the furnace is. Where the, exactly like in there, like in that acrylic room. I'm like, uh, do we have any fans? Like, what? What do we now? I'm, it's building up in You're my panicking. head already. I already know this is morning skate. <laughs> so you ask me if I'm there. I'm like, oh man, listen, the calling the game part, I, I can get down with that. But this post game after hours, I'm gonna be so hot in that. It looks like an incubator. I know for, for sure. So like, yeah, we see no problem. We've got it. We've got it. We've got a couple fans here. You'll be good. Sure enough, come down, race down from the broadcast booth, come down, get in there before we even go live. I'm leaking. Like through the suit. I'm leaking already. <laughs> and I'm on with – we had Pat Quinn, bless his soul. We had the great Pat Quinn was our guest. Scott Oak, Scott Oak is the host, as he still is. And my phone is lighting up. <laughs> and it's lighting up. We go to break. My boys are like, oh. get a towel. Takes her, hey, takes, her, takes her from Quinn. You know what they give the player or the coach <laughs> hey, the towel? Totally. Like, Probably. Oh his my God. Probably nice. It's oh. not. Uh, this yeah. is before Twitter really took exactly. off. This could have been a viral. Totally. Uh, yeah. This could have been a viral thing. I had another one of those I'll get to in Edmonton, too. <laughs> hey, by Actually, the way, no, that won't hey, be you, say, you saying it was pregame skate, that was yeah. like Biz being nervous for a fight that night. You were nervous for the heat <laughs> later totally. on. Totally. Like, I, I ain't sleep. God. I can't pregame nap. I swear to God. I was So to answer you, for the TV kind of component, not as much. 
But for that situation for after hours, I was literally leaking. I was so hot and sweaty. So as you know, any of my coworkers, I always tell them like, hey, listen. I'll buy you whatever you want, but I need to have the studio cold. No, the I'll girls have want. dresses on, and the studio is 62. <laughs> it's cold. And from like 7 to 10 p.m. They, yeah. in weeks, like, I'll do anything for you. I whatever just, you I, want. I'm Hot just... chocolate, you, you want sandwich, whatever you want, I'll buy. But <laughs> So is that how you sleep, or is it just because the, the when you're on television, that maybe the nerves take over, and that's why you open up? It's a, it's a part of both, but I come by it naturally. Like, listen, Caribbean parents, hot blood. Both parents. My mom sweats a lot, so I kind of get it from her. My dad never sweats, and her seldom unless he's outside in the garden or whatever. But for the most part, what's crazy too is at home, sixty-five, sixty-six, maybe sixty-eight, maybe. But those oh. nests have my fingerprints all over them. Oh yeah, those nests. Who touched the thermostat? You, I try to lock mine, bro. That's that's cold. Yo, that, listen, I, that's what I do. Sixty-seven, I mean, nice, sixty-seven. But yes, but here's here's a funny thing, and, and we can all relate to this. You know, you're on the road. You play with different guys. You're in the room. You room with different guys. So I remember my my rookie year in the minors. I room. I'll never forget. We were playing in uh, Adirondack. There was a snowstorm in Adirondack that looked like Ottawa or Owen Sound. And I played junior in Ottawa. You know Owen Sound in Ottawa. It's freezing in those places, but we're used to it. We're from Canada. It's cool. But Adirondack was freezing. The bus pulls up to the hotel. I'm not going to say the player I was rooming with. Bro, this guy had the window open. The <laughs> snow was blowing in. It was. Blowing I would in. rather that than 82 degrees. Totally, I'm it was not blowing in. Sleeping. And at the time, I'm like, "What's up?" But he was an older player. I'm like, "What's up with this clown?" Like, you know, you couldn't say anything. Got to be respectful. He had. He played in the show some. So at any rate, uh, whatever. That that's kind of where it kind of turned for me. But uh, truth be told, man, the other day we one of our air conditioners at the house and upstairs where our master bedroom is. All of a sudden, the heat wave came. We get back from our place in Miami, land in Jersey, get to the house. It's baking in there. Ugh. I was so upset. So I called the air conditioning guy. He's like, can't do it tonight. Week. Sorry, uh, can't do it tonight. Hotel. So he comes the next morning. Yeah, you need a whole new unit. You need a compressor. Whole, 5, 000, yeah, no problem, man. Here you go. Yeah. No it's problem. 10. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Like, dude, yeah. He could have said 55000 yeah. I would have bought that. <laughs> exactly. For sure. Oh, man. Totally. Oh, Actually, yeah. I think I, br- I ran into you yeah. when I was in Miami last time. Yeah, that's I think right. You, you had some real estate deals going on down there? Yeah. You yeah. stay Thanks. moving and shaking. And I was even going to say that even about like the the you know the media side of it is you really don't say no to anything. Mm. And it's nice that they're going to be able to let you stay with NHL Network even mm-hmm. though you're heading over to ESPN and mm-hmm. continue both gigs. Thank you. Look, I think, like you guys, when we first start, this is kind of a new venture for us, right? It's a second career. And as, as players, you play in this tournament. You go play pickup. You go play shinny. You want free ice. You play street hockey. You play mini sticks. We did that our whole lives. So it's kind of how we're wired in a way. And then for me, for media, I just really wanted to be as good as I could as fast as possible because I knew that there's so many established people yeah. that are so good at what they do in all sports, right? Like I, I'm an all sports guy. I love, of course, I'm a hockey nerd, but I watch all sports. So there's so many great commentators, men and women that are on in different sports. I'm like, oh, I really like him. I like her. She's excellent. They're good. And I wanted to be good. But also, too, it wasn't easy. Like I, I got to shout out Mark Jacobson, who ran the NHL Network up in Toronto, and Shirelli Najak, who ran Hockey Night in Canada, and who's still there. Those Jacobs, are your first spots. Those are my first people. Uh, and also Growing the great John Shannon. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and the great John Shannon. Different people behind the scenes, a lot of our producers. And I was hungry. I wasn't really cocky at all. I was really hungry. Hey, if you see anything, I would literally, guys, Monday night NHL Network, Tuesday night NHL Network, Wednesday night NHL Network, Thursday night NHL Network, Friday morning, fly out to do one of your games, yep. Arizona, Edmonton, wherever, do the game. Do after hours. Fly back Sunday, work Monday again. Exactly. And Monday morning, be back at the CBC building in Toronto doing tape with Shirelli. Just yeah, seeing if there's anything man. that I could have improved on. If So it was – even even now, like a, to your point, I just – I respect the craft. And we all have different paths like we did as players. But look at what you guys are doing. You guys bootstrapped this thing. And, you know, you started the way in which you started, and you guys just kept going, kept going, kept yeah. going, and you did more. You and you maybe did more. fail at some things, and of then you course. try others. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of all part of it, yeah. Totally, totally. And, and you know, that, that's – we learn as we go. We did that as players. Like, you didn't know how to do a backhand sauce right away. You didn't know how Still to – Still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I walked you into that one. Yeah. All right, probably got a better an, one than you know, me. Don't know how to do an ad read right away. Well, that may be a bad example. But you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, And, yeah. and you get humble. Like, when you learn to play – you're getting humbled even as you grow and you get up to different levels. You get into college, you yeah. get to BU. Look at the guys you were playing with. Look at the guys you are playing against. So as sweet as you were and as nice and skilled as you were, there's still things that 
we learned as players, and I think it kind of applies in this stuff too. No doubt. And, and you've, you've busted your hump on TV, Kev, but another aspect of the media you've, got, you've gotten into is breaking stories. Do you like chasing the scoops down or what? Or do they yeah, just kind noticed, of follow dude. You, you, that's more what, and more every year. I'd love to break it. I think you got the three, the three like, red alarms at every tweet. Breaking, breaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, get the, you, <laughs> get the, you get the header the set for your breaking and, uh, news. Yeah. Okay, so here, here's the thing with that. I respect all of the breakers, like all the trade breakers that we have from – Fridge to sometimes it's Chris Johnson to drags to to the OG Bob McKenzie the, the, OG, the Bob yeah. you know what I mean um, Adam Schefter in the NFL side Woj in the NBA side Shams on the NBA side it's so hard to chase that stuff oh it's and, a grind and everything has to kind of line up right everything and and you know you have to double check triple check to make sure everything's right everything's accurate but also too like we were players and you want to be respectful there's times this past summer. The Patrick Hornquist one, he didn't know about the deal. And I broke the deal. That's happened a couple times. And I broke the deal not knowing that he didn't know That's about the deal. Blame the agent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> once, once, you the get the, once you get the go from the source, yeah. you don't care if the player does. That's why, right. that's why he right. threw his gear out on his lawn. That's why his gear was on his lawn. Actually? It, it was, oh, shit. He didn't. I mean, obviously, he's upset about leaving Pitt. Of course. Who wouldn't? You leave Sid. You know, you're in Pitt. You both were. Get your cups. You, Sid. Back to back, but and and Florida wasn't what it's starting to become now, based on the year they had, right? So he was probably a big part of that. But. Exactly, no question. So I try to be as mindful and tactful as I can, but I like that. There's a little rush to doing that. Oh, there is. There's I, a little bit of a rush, a little bit of I don't, and, these and guys. nerves. Has has a huge like, of course, and nerves. Ra has a huge scoop right now. Yeah, he's huge. Well, holding on to it. Huge. What are you doing, Ra? I know. Kind of asked the question. Cause I, got, I know. Because the last time I got one this this way, I ended up getting frosted. Things kind of changed, so I put myself out there. So I'm a little hesitant yeah. this time, but he's, he's a little gun shy. You know, yeah, yeah, I was gonna shy. say. Hey, you know what it is? It's me. It's me throwing a pizza first shift and second shift. I have that pass to the middle, but I might just go off the wall and out because I'm but, I'm but I'm, I'm here I, to, I don't know when this is going to drop but I'll throw it out there. hearing a prominent Bruin will not be back next next year someone who's going to be a free agent and they won't be signed they're going to opt to to go elsewhere but I was waiting on the last thing okay you can run with it but I didn't get that so I can oh, throw that no out as a way. tease yeah let's just say there'll be about seven and a quarter available I'll leave it at that oh wow that's <laughs> huge yeah, so I have no clue yeah. who's talking about that's, it. that's that's right exactly yeah. I know this is that, yeah, exact, that's yeah. huge though but, I mean that's, that's I think you should told, tweet it then, right now I mean being told David Krejci will not <laughs> yeah, exactly. be back with the Boston Bruins. So. Weeksy just, you know just did. Yeah, Weeksy right. just did. All right, where are we leaving? <laughs> <laughs> Weeksy got another 17 one. 17 emergency oh, siren. So moves. Oh, yoink. That's, <laughs> yoink. Hey, you know but, what, though? I, I have no problem but being I, wrong. Throwing yeah, but I told these guys. Yeah, it's true, though. Well, I mean, from, I make stuff up. They obviously yeah. grew up playing hockey. I was a journalism major. For me, yeah. like scoring a goal is like getting a story. I think it's an equivalent thing. It's like you get the high in a similar way for me. Yeah, I agree. Because I can't score a goal. So. And, and listen, and listen, you can't always. I mean, you can't always be accurate because there's so many moving parts, right? Like this isn't, this isn't you. This isn't wit biz. This, it's not any of us. This, these are the people that are playing. It's the factors, the agent. It's the GM. It's the agent's runner. It's all these different people, team president, team owner. Like that's how a lot of these deals come down. Yep. Sometimes, listen. Sometimes, you know, there's different sources. Everybody kind of scoffs at the trainers. Not me. I never scoffed at them when I, I always took care of them. I always do now. Whatever, massage therapist. But you know a lot of people. They were more important pieces than I was, so I had to <laughs> be they, nice and, to them. And they hear things before anyone Of course sometimes. they do. Yeah, a lot yeah. of them, Zamboni drivers. Like I, I'll tell you a story. There's, we're going to need a helmet for uh, number 88. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> There's a Zamboni driver that when I was younger as a, as a kid playing back in Toronto, I won't say what arena because I don't want to tip it off, but he was there since I was six. He's still at that rink now. It's a legendary rink that you know very well. Back home. Same mm -hmm. Reddit already figured it and, out. I was going to ask you about and, that. And I got to tell you what, he, there's numerous times that he's told me, he's like, hey, listen, I had this scout come talk to me. I had this GM come talk to me. I had that person talk to me. Zamboni driver, by the way. Yeah. So for a lot of you young girls and boys and people that are listening that aspire to play at a higher level, you never, my parents always tell me to this day, you never know who's who. And you know you always want to try to do right by people where you can because you never know who's who and who might have that word for sure. You know what I mean? Especially as you're aspiring to play at higher levels, right? Um, you just mentioned St. Mike's. Well, yeah. kind of, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I kind, kind of. of uh, <laughs> I kind of did, I, but I let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. The you cat would... wasn't even in the bag. Imagine Biz <laughs> trying to hold on to a source's <laughs> name. He's like Jerry. <laughs> oh shit! 
<laughs> it's like, uh, you mean same? What do you mean? Text us uh, on the source for me over here. <laughs> so being from Go. Toronto, I'm sure yeah. that experience before you got the junior was everything you wanted. I mean, there's a list of, of how yeah. many guys who eventually moved on from the St. Mike's buzzers to go on to play for totally. even St. Mike's majors in yep. junior A mm -hmm. and then go on to the NHL. Was that a big preparation time for you? Yeah, it was huge. We grew up down the street from St. Mike's before we moved to Scarborough. We lived on St. Clair, off of St. Clair and Christie, like five minutes from there. So I'll take you back. Like Sean Burke playing for St. Mike's buzzers. My dad and I are walking up to St. Mike's or taking the TTC up to St. Mike's to watch Sean Burke play. Like he's a, he's a can't miss, right? He was a can't miss goalie. So you know, I'm six, seven. Sean Burke is That's the man. Awesome. You, then it was Mike Rosati, who's now Vegas's goalie coach. He was playing there. I mean, there's so many guys and people that played there. And then it got a little bit closer to home with the Big E, right? When the Big E was there at 15, Big Eric Lindros was there at 15. And then it came full circle because I played with them a little bit. That was our, like, Tier 2 affiliate. So I was with Brett Lindros there. But just, uh, I mean, the tradition of all the people that have played there, guys working out there in the offseason, as you know, of course, you guys, the whole BioSteel group and everything else. So it's it's one of those shrines. It's one of those hockey shrines for any of the listeners. If you ever have a chance and you're in Toronto, make sure you go and check out St. Mike's Arena. St. Mike's at Chesswood, because I play Toronto Red Wings. Those are two of the most like iconic rinks. And it's special times, man, because, listen, we all started young. Like, none of us, like, we all hoped to play in the show. We wanted to that play in the show. That was kind of hockey night in Canada when you totally. were playing, when you're playing minor hockey. A hundred percent. And that's why I told you earlier, I never wanted to leave the rink. And I got to say something. Being as curious as I am and, and as hungry as I was to learn, so many of those older goalies and older players were so cool to me. Like, they never would shun me if I want to try their glove or, hey, guys, can I come in the room and just see the midget team? You're playing people. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, yeah, come on in here, man. No problem. And what's funny, guys, and, and you guys have seen this full circle, too, we're at Stanley Cup Final in St. Louis, right, two years ago against your bees. Mm -hmm. It was why'd hot you, why, outside why, why on set. I saw you. Yeah, I, oh my! I was a chocolate souffle. <laughs> it was, oh my god! Kid me? So 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 your squad, your right? Your hometown, but your squad. So we're in this specifically in St. Louis. So going on the headset to call the game or whatever. I see this guy I haven't seen since I was eight years old. Last name's Kairou. I'm like, it's Aki Kairou, Jordan Kairou's dad. I used to go into their room as like a peewee, minor peewee, when his dad was playing for the midget team. And his dad was a good player. And his dad was a good player. And this is Jordan Kairou's dad. Oh, I almost started crying. Old. I'm like, oh, my oh. God. I'm like, Aki, is that you? He's like, Kev, man, what's going on? Bra, 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 bra. And I didn't know that him and my cousins grew up together in Parkdale back home. So it's a small world and just goes to show you never really know. And here I am. You know, I, His dad is one of those people I idolize. And now his son's living his dream. Playing for the heck Blues and a heck of a good young player too. Heck of a player. So just just goes to show you, Biz. You just you know you, we just never know where things will go. Yeah, uh, I was going to hop in just quickly. About yeah, that. take you, your time. You also mentioned agents and, and all these different fabrics of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to get your feeling on and going back to last year that whole Allen Walsh situation and mm -hmm. how you viewed it, and especially even moving forward into this year with that goaltending situation in Vegas. Okay. As a former goaltender, yeah. how did you view it all? So let me qualify it this way. I will say that. First of all, I, as I said earlier, there's only one net, which is great for being a goalie and which sucks being a goalie. There's only there's no rolling over the boards. All right, change. <laughs> Left winger. Let's. You know what I mean? There's only one tendy in the net at once. And if you are getting the call in, it's, you're down 6 nothing. And you're down 6 nothing <laughs> in pit. Pit's on a 5-on-3 <laughs> power play. They skin the old barn. They skate over like weeks. I'm like, who are you looking for? You looking for me? So, <laughs> Malkin, Sid, Tic Tac, Latang. Couldn't even be on the bench. Oh, my gosh. So, that's the hard part about being a tender, right? Because only one goalie could play. I'll then say this. I know Alan Walsh well. He goes to bat for his players, oh, yeah. man. Alan goes to bat. He'll go to war for his players. You have to send him on a helicopter, Spectre gunship into Afghanistan. He's there. Like, honestly, like he'll do whatever it takes for his players. So, I respect that part of it. I've known Robin and heard about Leonard from my boy who you guys had on, the great Henrik Lundqvist, because Leonard's dad was his goalie coach growing up in Sweden. No People shit. didn't know that. No, no. way. I no clue. When we were playing yeah. here in New York, Hank's like, wait till you see this Leonard kid. Wait till you see him. He's 13. Wait till you see him. He's going to play in the show. Because Leonard's dad was his goalie coach and growing up And you could already tell then. Henrik, wait till you see him. He's only 13. Wait till you see him. He, he, he can He's play. probably built like a man at that point, Exactly. Too. Exactly. So I've always liked him since he got drafted to the Sens. 
And then flowers flower. Like, how do we not love flower? It It's unfortunate that it played out publicly. But here's the thing, man. We got to be real. I love everything about Vegas. I love their owner, Bill Foley, the man, the way he treats the players, trainers, staff, fans, everybody. First class operation. But they've been kind of messing around with flower a little bit. And at some point, here's the thing. And we always talk about this at home. Flower is like a golden retriever or a lab. You know what he's I mean? Not, he's not going to give you any attitude He's not a Rottweiler. And they take advantage of Correct. it. Correct. He's yeah. not a Rottweiler. Yeah. You, yeah. you feel yeah. me? Like, he's almost yeah, too nice at times. You're yeah. like... If, 100%. If he's a Doberman... But he's all about the team. So it's... it's 100%. It's, but, but a lab will bite too if, if it has to. Well, if it has to. <laughs> but, but you know, like they keep, you keep messing around and you kind of saw the way it went down in pit towards the end. Now you see him kind of the way it's happening in Vegas, which is unfortunate because... I, this is hard to say. He'll probably end up third all time in wins, all time great. But what's crazy is the fact that he gets jacked around as I well. Know. So if what he, does that say for any one of us oh, in here? If yeah. the flower, like there, like there's even conversations. He might be on the move. You exactly. Know, where it's like, oh my goodness, you know, he's on his you know third team now, and this totally. guy's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Totally. And, and pigeon and, tossed. And if and if it's us and we're him, we might actually want to move or entertain it. I don't know. So, all well, and there's that, one thing. Sorry to interrupt you. There's one thing yeah. as guys get older and like the Parisi situation, they're like, yeah, you're not the same player. You, lo- but Fleury is still producing at their high enough gonna level, and he's getting treated like going to win the Vezzi this year. He's going to win it. He, I think he wins he, the Vezzi this year. He needs one. Do you think he, he you should? You think it'd be like a? I, I think they maybe hopefully look at it not just that his season wasn't amazing. Lifetime but they achievement. Look at it like this is your career. Like you get, you, you deserve one. I think so. Well, I su- think so. And for the surprised? mental warfare from Alan Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but I love but to be I love the fact that Alan goes to bat for him. Yeah, no, I, you know you guys know. Like we all listen. Everybody I, I hear this often, especially in TV, and you guys have built something so unique and so incredible here that you you know, you have ownership stake. It's it's real, it's raw, and it's 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 authentic. This is a word I like to say. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? But for a lot of us and the other sides of the business it's we don't necessarily always have that, and then some of the politics starts eking in, and then people will always say, "Oh, you hockey guys are so nice." Okay, let's mess around with you. Okay, you hockey guys are so cool. You guys are so team first. Well, let's let's mess around with you again. Let's move this goal line over here. Let's do that over there. And quite frankly, I'm telling you now, and with other athletes, that's not happening. You can't play those games with NBA players, NFL players, baseball players because they'll get right to it. But they see, and hockey players are genuinely nice people. So, it, it again, it comes back to are you the lab or are you the Rottweiler or the pit bull? Do you get what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. do. I do. And You've got to stick up for yourself. 100%. And 100%. And that's kind of the deal with, with Flower. So, hopefully it ends well for everybody because they're a first-class group. And I love Flower, and I think Robin's an excellent goalie. Oh, yeah. They're both awesome. They're both awesome. I just think it's too much of a good thing right now. And I'm curious to see how it gets resolved. So, you would have went back to Flower for game four? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Come on, yeah. boys. Yeah. Right. Seemed like Sorry. a no-brainer. Sorry for even asking. Biz, you? I'm going to leave. Biz, <laughs> no, no, no. No, Biz, no. Biz called no, it. Biz, come on. Well, no, you, I, I called it. I, I I, you knew they were going to well, do it. Well, no, time. I, I think I said beforehand, I think they were going to do it. And then when yeah. it was announced, I said, I think it's the right play. And he said, well, what do they do after? I said, regardless, I think they're going back to Flurry for game he five. Called oh, that. Okay. My, you, you my thing was yeah. Flurry again. Yeah. If he's no good, Leonard at home. Yeah. Or what would that have yeah. been? Yeah. Back at home for five. Yeah, back at home. Yeah. Exactly. And and it was just. Okay. It was interesting. It was yeah. it was a it was an odd way for the season to end for a guy who was the best goalie in the league this year. Many say, and also the team couldn't score. It wasn't even his fault. Wasn't to begin his fault. With. Yeah, yeah. Might not have mattered in the, the sticks. Moment. The sticks. This all their sticks froze up, man. We've uh, everybody sticks for froze every up. every year it does on the now. podcast true. itself. We kind of beat that subject uh, yeah. pretty much yeah. throughout playoffs. But I wanted to get your opinion on sure. it because you probably have a pretty I good got pulse on for it. You. So thank you for the insight and. Um, so you talk about getting into the media game. You're very you're natural at it. You've worked hard at it. No part of you ever really wanted to be GM, assistant GM, player development. Were you ever looking at that? Funny. That's an interesting question. So when I was all media, it's I'd so say probably the first too. nine years, right? Probably yeah. the first nine years. This is my 12th year in media now. First nine years, I was all media. And then somebody had asked me if I would ever consider, would I ever consider being a GM? And I was like, never really considered it but okay and then it kind of grew on me a little bit and i thought about it you know a little bit more a little deeper kind of went deeper into my mind and thinking about it and visualizing it talking about it at home talking about it with our families and stuff different people your trusted people i was kind of like hey i prefer to probably be a team president of hockey ops 
because we played with how many different of these guys and people that we know that are GMs, team presidents, head coaches, and you're kind of like, mm, I could do this. Yeah, right. That's, it's, that's a competitive juices for A hundred percent. And listen, it's amazing to to be in the role that we're in. You know, you guys doing all the amazing content and and, and all of us contributing in the ways we do. But look, man, we all want to drink some champagne out of the cup, drink yeah, some Dom, some that's true. That, that, That's what's sick is you, you know get what to I stay mean? involved in winning and building. You know what I'm saying? I like, know. And, and you think of all the people. None of us have rings here. We lost in one. Call their cup. Some of us have drank yes. that. <laughs> yes, that a boy. Exactly. Not the big one, but no, I know no, what you're saying. saying. But you know of, what I mean? It, you uh, did that Quebec with that group Kiwi, in Ontario. 97. He went to right? Quebec champ. Yeah, yeah, Kiwi exactly. Well. Exactly. But I get, I get what you're you know saying. You know what I mean? Is, is I, right. would, I always think about it maybe down the road if I would ever want to get back in coaching. Maybe right. like if I ever have kids and stuff. I but, think you'd be great but, at but, that, but, too. But part of me would want to challenge myself to see if I'd be good at something back on the other side. Right. And And just because of all the experience that we had, right? So. So for me, I, look, I played for the great Lou Lamorello, the great Glenn Sather, the great Jimmy Rutherford. I was on with him yesterday. The, the he's, late, he's getting back involved. Of course he is. He ain't going anywhere. Of course he is. The late, <laughs> the late great Bill Torrey, the architect of the Islanders. Like, I played for all those people. So a lot of what I saw from them and a lot of what I liked and what they did and then plus our own experience and the new game and, and everything else, just kind of putting that all together – there's a part of me that's interested in it. So to answer you, um, Wits, I'm interested in it, but it has to be something that I've learned through this interview process on that is it really comes down to people. Yeah, because your name pops up in these things all the time when it, when it used to not. And, I mean, TV compared yeah. to being a GM or a president, it's a cushy gig. Like You, you marry that job once you take it. Right, but it you're right. But it has to be the right people and the right ownership group. That's what I've come to find out. Because i got to tell you this, and, and to be respectful of the process – Look, man, I know, as do you guys, we have an intrinsic knowledge of the game. Like, you know, if you got a nick on your skate, you could feel it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, that, sure. like, your stick's a little bit too whippy. Okay, this tape's not grippy enough. Um, whatever it is. We know the game that well. And, okay, I'm 46. I've been in the game for 40 years. And outside of two years house league at St. Mike's and two years, and call it maybe four, four years in the minors that's like 34 years at the elite level it's a lot of experience around the game around the game yeah meeting so many different people meeting too. so many and always being the, at the elite cap level. the cap threw a bit of a wrench at us but i get what you're saying <laughs> you know exactly yeah. exactly do they, do they hand you a test when you go in and no. the capologist stuff <laughs> you know what's funny it's funny you ask that they don't really in, in my in my experience in these interviews it hasn't been about that for me, but what's been really interesting is you're trying to convince people that don't know one billionth what we know about the game that you're a, a good candidate. So that's kind of been an interesting process. Do you know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Like in one of them, and keeping the process respectful, I, I had a family member of one of them like interrogating me. And I'm like, you don't even know. Did you play the Quebec Pee Wee tournament? Like, did I see you in Kamloops? Were you in the Kamloops tournament? Like, were you in the even before your time in the Sea Spray tournament in Boston in the summer? Like, well, I don't, I, I didn't see you there in '84. Like, it was pretty interesting. And I don't say that to grandstand. It's just that I, I, what I've seen, and you guys would have seen this based on your experiences. The good organizations have really good people that have good intentions and that treat people first class. And that want to do it for the right reasons, and also you know let what I'm saying? them do their job. Let them do their job. If you're if you're in the mix, it's like the Jerry Jones thing. It's like how are you supposed to build a team? Yes. if you have voices up top that don't even know much about the sport. Exactly, telling you what to do. A hundred percent. So there is, yeah. yeah in, in asking you about getting into yeah. that side of it, it is. It's just such a short life too for guys where. People are just hired to be fired. And yeah. It's a little different in the media where obviously people are let go, but right. the pressure is just – it's the pressure versus the ability to go back in and find that drive to try to win. Mm -hmm. And you wanted a cup as a player and, like, look at Eiserman. Look how bad this guy totally. wants it, what he's doing now. It's just competitiveness. But yeah. But I do – but but what's interesting is everybody – you know, we, we, we do multimedia – and what drives you in doing multimedia? Like, what is it on a day to day for you guys? You know, I've had conversations with you guys, and like, you guys are freaking crushing this shit. Like, you guys are rocking this I, I, shit. I have to do. I, I like you know to what do I mean. Different things. I sometimes get a little bit bored if you say stagnant, so right? Coming outside the box, and that's sure. why I mentioned like a cha a challenge, doing something yeah. different. Yeah. But on the same side, like you've spent 
what you said 12 years now in media yeah that's a long time to build it up to where you've got now and now you got the you know nhl network espn gig mm-hmm. you're doing the international for the nhl and mm-hmm. so the, the sky's the limit in the media world so it'd be hard because you i don't think you'd be sta- taking a step back or or maybe sideways would be a fair statement yeah and, well, then, and then i don't know if you get you know, you get the respect in, in, at where you're starting as a gm job or wherever you would in the front office to where you are in the media world exactly and also the performance aspect right like we're performers that's what we do. We're this is our stage. This is our rink. This is your new rink. You know what? Okay, this what's is street hockey rink? <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But hey, this is bar stool. This is what we do. This you know, this you guys think we're growing market share. Pink Whitney, how many times I text you guys and ask you guys what's going on? Yeah. What's happening? Like uh, what's the latest? We don't even know. How many millions is it now, boys? <laughs> don't be tight. Tell me. Tell yeah, the yeah, fans yeah. like people want to see the growth. The Forbes articles. No, it's true, but you start going through all these progression, you guys hit, you're hitting, you're climbing, you're hitting, you're climbing. It's really no different. So that's kind of I like that performance element and I, I wonder that if I do end up getting a front office position, team pres or GM you get the juice because you have the investment in the team, but you're not the one that's performing. Yeah. Whereas in media, we're still the ones that are performing. Well, you're so performing, but it's uh, it's behind the scenes. Exactly, correct. And that's well, the well said. Well said. Well, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the strings. Totally. Talk about your latest career. Let's go back to your first career, your hockey career. You had yeah. a, a pretty good one. You were the uh, second round pick, Florida Panthers. Their very first entry draft. So, yep. I mean, you were basically their, their future goalie. That's what they drafted you for, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's, it, it was – I'll always be indebted to them and be grateful to them. Um, they developed me. They helped me get to the NHL. And, you know, you you start moving around. There's Here's one thing that was interesting is as a goalie, and especially as a black goalie playing hockey, you don't always get the benefit of the doubt. You're not getting a long leash. You're not getting – so everything is, like, hyper tight. Like, for me, I was wound that way. And it's the way I'm kind of wired. But at the same time, the reality is, is I felt, you probably heard me say this, you see me sweating now as I talk about it. I literally felt like I was on a tightrope over Niagara Falls with no safety net, none. And especially in that era, right? Like it's a little different maybe now, but especially like early 90s, mid 90s. And luckily, the great Grand Prix who you guys had on was Grant. And, he, you know, he proved to people and, and Glenn Sather to his props to Glenn Sather for always having international teams in Edmonton, always, and here yeah. with the Rangers too. But, I mean, you had Grant, and then we had Freddie, and Joaquin Gage and some of these other goalies. Uh, we had Pokey Reddick, <clears throat> pardon me, but really it was really lonely out there. It was a real lonely existence from that standpoint because it wasn't really normalized for a lot of people. And they didn't treat prospects like they treat them now. Exactly. It wasn't like, hey, we're working with you after practice. You got this in the summer. It was Correct. like, hey, good luck, man. It was different. than There wasn't the development of yeah. players back when you came into the league. Exactly. And I was lucky that Florida had the great Billy Smith, which is amazing. Oh, my God. He was your goalie coach? What? Bro, wait. <laughs> they had, I had the great Billy Smith, and I swear, <laughs> thanks, thanks to Billy because he kind of helped. He kind of helped sharpen my mentality a little bit to be a little more intense, I guess, if you will. Obviously, it's Billy Smith, yeah, right? Yeah. But here is what was so Florida, to their credit, they would send him to Owen Sound or they send him to Ottawa when I got traded there and stuff in, in the O. And he he would always he was always trying to impart like competitiveness. Weeks, you got you got Weeks, you this is your net, your net. Weeks, it's your net. Nobody comes. You fucking quit. Your blue paint. Your blue paint. You got to defend your blue paint. No passes through the blue paint. Nobody skates in here and drives the net. None of that. Nobody drives the goal line. You got to. I swear to God, guys, I was a hundred. I looked like I was on the Kenyan marathon team. I was 158 pounds. I was just fighting I was, guys in practice. No, on, I swear. And I told you about going to the O, right? So I'm 158 pounds, 10 pack. You could see every vein, like so skinny and so wiry. And I'm taking guys out in practice because I didn't know. Because after I got drafted by them... League was big then, too. Yeah, exactly. Billy Smith was like, hey, man, you, you got it. You got it. Def-. So guys would be like cutting the net. I'd come out like hashing. <laughs> take legs out. <laughs> take knees out. Poke check. Like guys would come around blocker side, and I'd already have my hand up at the top of my stick waiting for them to come around. Sword as they come around. Chop their leg. Like, so finally, some of the older guys are like, Weeksy, man, you, you got to chill. Like, you, you got to chill. This isn't... This isn't Go cool. tell him that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, this isn't cool. You're going to blow somebody's ACL out, heaven forbid. So it was just kind of learning as we went along. And listen, like, we don't know. We we watch the games. You go to the rink as a kid. 
my parents are from beautiful Barbados, man. They were just learning hockey as we went along. There was no playbook. There was no guidebook. As now you see the Kachuks and all these, Sam Gagne, all these different second generational players. We didn't have that. So we just learned as we kind of went. So it was, I, I loved it, man. It was all that I hoped it would have been. I love the game. I love the position. I'm a goalie freak. I'm a hockey freak. But there were challenges, man. There were some challenges in, in being a black player and certainly being a black goalie at that time. It, you don't – contracts aren't the same. Opportunities aren't the same. And some of the people – John Torchetti, amazing. Oh, Torch? S- Torch, awesome. My man. Steve Ludzik, amazing. Um, Paul Maurice, awesome. Jim Rutherford, Glenn Sayer. There's people that – Benoit Lair, the goalie coach. There's people that, are, that were awesome. But some of those people just didn't really like the fact that you were there. At the same time, you know what I mean? And it's like, uh, I don't know if we're going to give you that contract. We'll probably give you 50 cents on the dollar. Everything's a grind. It's always a grind. And yeah. it's probably frustrating too, Kev, because it's not a tangible thing you could like look and point to. You. It's like you, you totally. just know. Like you just can't. 100%. And people then, oh, they, they can, something they can doubt you on it unless you can unequivocally prove it. Yeah, what do you mean? Know? Exactly. And, that's, and, and you know what? That brings us to today, right? Yeah. That brings us to today. We're in a different world today. Than we were in the early 90s. It's a different, you know, people's understanding, people's compassion, people's empathy. It's, we have second civil rights movement last year. So it's, it, and also it's kind of been this unspoken truth in our game that's been for all the amazing things about our game, which we love, and none of us would be here without it. So we always love the game, put the game first, right? We know that. But that's been something that's been bubbling under the surface that has never really fully been addressed publicly. And I think this last year and a half, when you see, some the players that do look like us and more importantly the players that don't and people that don't look like us come forward and support and say hey man this is horseshit like this has to stop yeah you know we don't want to see this happen to an ethan bear or whoever the person may be anymore was it hard when you were moving around and and maybe getting different direction from different goalie coaches where you're trying to keep these new people in these new organizations i don't want to say happy because in some cases they're probably like hey play your game but yet they're still trying to teach you and and show you what to do so where was like the one place where you finally felt like you were at home that's a great question i think jeff reese when reeser when i was in tampa i mentioned billy smith off the start but reeser when i was in tampa is now dallas goalie coach Reeser was great to me, and we had the great Nikolai Habi Bulin. So I learned so much from the Bulin wall because at that point I was going from being like athletic guy to butterfly athletic guy. And Habi was one of the best on the planet at that point. You know, you could put him in against Belfour, who I was actually texting with him yesterday. Belfour, um, Patrick Waugh, any of those greats. Fierzy, like he'd go head-to-head with any of them, right? Marty and and those types of goalies so I, seeing him every day in tampa i was learning a lot from him and i think reeser really helped me there but my own personal goalie coach sudzi sudzi maharaj who's anaheim's goalie coach he like had not for him i wouldn't have lasted in the league as long as i did he was amazing like that I'm, summer work you're doing with him oh my god like i'm telling you like we go center ice arena back home pharmacy and mcnichol underneath the chinese buffet that center ice arena literally underneath the chinese buffet and suds you'd be coming from Oakville. And this is coming like deep North Scarborough. And he would say, he's like, hey, what time do you want to skate? I'm like, all right, 8 in the morning. Okay, no problem. Drive through Toronto traffic. Get all the way there. Be ready. That's awesome. Have That's... a shooter or two shooters. Like, I almost tear up talking about it. Yeah. I did uh, – I, I was doing something for the NHL coaches clinic. I was hosting online a Zoom with them. And I literally had tears flowing, like talking about him for what he meant – and it, there was a cultural fluency because he's from Trinidad, right? So he's from the Caribbean too. His parents are from Trinidad. He played the position. Yeah. And there was a cultural fluency there, but he he really helped me a lot and gave me a lot of confidence. And just I wouldn't be here without him, honestly. And and yeah. I don't not to speak for you, but yeah. I'm guessing one of your most memorable moments in jumping around was in Carolina and that yeah. run to the cup. And totally. Ironically enough, I was at. Um, the triple overtime game oh, when, no way. when uh, Larry Onoff scored. Yeah, beautiful backhander. But yeah. throughout that run, you had a big you had a, a big role early on in the playoffs, right? Thank so you. So what what was the whole situation in terms of you and Urbe and how you were playing? And Archie was the man. I mean, he was a great goalie. You know how long he played. He's about as tall as this camera set up here we have. That was such an unreal Maybe. story, too. He was like 34 during that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was doing repairs on his own pads, wasn't he? Bro, was he? Totally. Yeah, he used to. Guys, you have no. Yes, exactly. Listen. He so, was homegrown. He was like Tim Thomas before Tim Thomas. 100%. So homemade, not even yeah, homegrown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what I meant. That's totally what I meant. Home. So, we, truth be told, we have the same agent. I still have Paul Theophanis out of New York here. Amazing. Um, him and Brad, amazing people. Theo served the country. 
badass Delta Force, Green Beret, wow. Special Forces cat. Amazing. Speaks how many different languages? Fluent in Russian, Greek, American, New Yorker. Jer- like, Jeez. He's incredible, this guy. Went to Harvard, it just off the charts. But he was our agent, and we had both him and Archer Zerbe. So I get traded to Carolina. He had both of us. Archie's the man. He's been multi-time all-star down there. He's like the guy. But what was crazy is when I first got – you asked about feeling at home. When I first got there, like I didn't have to feel like a freak anymore because at the time I was in great shape. I had an eight-pack. Like, But then you have the Greek god. That's Rod Brindamore. Oh. You know what I mean? And then you had Sammy Kapanen and Ronnie Francis, Brett Hedekin, who was super stacked. And you had all these other guys. O-Dog. O-Dog, O-Dog. another Greek <laughs> god. But, but listen, but O-Dog then Sonic. was a different O-Dog that you see now, of course. O-Dog like, was a sniper. O-Dog yeah. could fly. And to tell you guys. I could he fly against, too? Yeah. Was that one of his big I didn't like know. Shot. So he was shot. Shot. Yeah. Totally. That's yes. a great, great comparison. He was that yes. Absolutely. Huh? O-Dog, yeah. O-Dog was a, he was a, he he was was a, a player. Dude. Yeah. Funny fucking bastard too. Totally. And I'll tell you what's <laughs> crazy about O-Dog is growing up playing against him in Toronto, he was a playmaker. He was never Kessel before. So in the O, this guy would switch hands over as a righty, come down, give you a shimmy, turn his hands over, lefty, sauce. No. I saw it in Guelph. I saw it playing against Guelph. Him so and he's, Todd he's saucing it off fouls. the backhand. He's saucing off the backhand, holding the stick. Holding the stick. Switching lefty. his whole it, – he was so gifted and then became a goal scorer, as you guys know, and, and had great wheels. But we just had a really special team at that time. And these guys were, you know, everybody, especially led by Rod, conditioning. And Archie was in sick shape, too. So I Tell us some Brenda Moore stuff. Well, well, well we got to get Archie first. <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. No, no, no. I keep interrupting No, you. it's all good. I like that because natural. So, so basically, right from the beginning, guys would come up to me in practice. They're like, you know, you could play, man. Like, you're, you could do that. Like, you're, you, you can kick. I'm like, hey, guys, thanks. You know, whatever. And remember, we had Archie and Tom Barrasso. Yeah, that's right. Too. We had Tommy B there, two cups, Tom Brasso at that point. Rumpy, right? Bro. <laughs> Bro. So this is it comes back again. So I'm the chocolate lab, so everybody's like, Oh, we see, okay. No problem. We could shoot high on you. You don't get you don't complain. No problem. Shots ripping off my collarbone. I was like, whatever. Cause they couldn't shoot high on Tommy B. No. Like you couldn't even get it above his waist, like above his pants, and he could fire it. He'd shoot it back at guys, skate off the ice. So and it had a great career, of course, but that was kind of the dynamic. So I was like the third guy when I got traded there, until they moved Tommy, and then um, as the playoffs started, Archie started off. He was hot, and I remember Paul Maurice told me before the playoffs, he's like, "Weeksy, be be ready, <laughs> be fucking ready, be ready, be fucking ready." I'm like, "Okay, coach, you know whatever," um, but I-, I can share this. I don't want to get too crass, but I'll share this story. So as it turns out, I end up getting in a couple games just up the road, ironically, by our Jersey house here at the old Meadowlands. I get in a couple games in relief, and then now it's ahead of game five. And he calls me, and they tell me he wants to see me in the office. I'm like, oh, my gosh, coach wants to see me in the office. What's going on? So I go in there, and I'll say this for the audience, although I, I'll keep it relatively clean, but I have to be real. He's like, Weeksy? He's got a, you know, he's got a oh, lipper yeah. in, right? He's like, Weeksy, you're fucking going tomorrow. <laughs> You're going. <laughs> it's my first playoff start. Now I've gotten in in relief, right? I'm getting sweaty telling the story. Turn the camera off. Turn the AC <laughs> up. No, no, this is like, good. honestly. So he's, so, so he's like, you're fucking going tomorrow, big boy. I'm like, okay, coach. Yep, coach. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. He goes, I want your balls to hang down like big old church bells. <laughs> big old church bells hanging down. Big balls tomorrow. <laughs> And I swear to God, I don't know if I walked out of the office. I don't know if I crawled out of the office. I don't know how I got out of the office. You see how I'm reacting now. I don't know. But I literally went stretched, worked out, changed, went back to the, to the, to the hotel there in Raleigh because I was living in the hotel at that time. I started visualizing. Like I, mu- I must have had 25 crystal balls in my room. I'm exaggerating, but I literally started visualizing this whole game, all these plays, Okay, Neuendijk's going to be over here. Niedermeyer's going to be there. Scotty Stevens is going to be here. Pandolfo, Madden. Like, I literally must have gone through this game in my head about 10 times the night before what that What game start. of the series was game it? Game five. Wow. And we end up winning this game. Dude, right? that's we win this amazing. this game in OT. But really what was so cool about it is kind of everything that you live for 
to to get there. It all kind of made sense because now you're playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. You just want to play. I mean? You just want a playoff game in the yeah, NHL. Like. And and we, the great Joe Vasicek, uh, bless him, who passed on, ended up scoring that that goal in OT. You remember Big Joe Joe Vasicek, Big Lefty, yeah, sixty three, yeah, and he was in that Did tragedy in uh, oh. Yaroslav and in, in Yaroslav. So yeah. um, may he rest easy and rest in peace. But he scored that game winner and. Life just kind of changed after that, and things just. It, but our team, it was really our team, that group. We just had so many. Like, I'm telling you, we would think we're working out. To, you asked me about Roddy, and the, never mind the amazing job that he's done as coach in oh. the Canes, which took too long for them to hire him. Took too long for them to resign him. That's never yeah. a combo. But nonetheless, we would think we were training, and we were. All you heard, click, clink, click, clink, click, clink, click, clink, click, clink, <laughs> squat rack, click, clink, click, clink. This guy. He's everything that you've heard about him and more. So he's screaming at the mirror at himself before the squat. Oh, my God. I'm telling you. like, <laughs> Did he make you put needles in his ass? <laughs> I'm telling you. No, this guy's old natural. Like, I never saw him eat anything bad. I never saw him drink anything that he shouldn't. He's so hyper committed to the game, so real to the game, so true to it. And if you go back and look at pictures in the hockey news, like when he was in Michigan State as a freshman, he was built like that. Yeah. Oh He's, really? He yeah. was stacked up from the beginning, like not a hard gainer like me. Like he was already a man, but he yeah. put in so much work. And even now, as a as a coach, and that's why guys love playing for him because he's real. He doesn't disrespect anybody. He loves everybody in the room, no matter where you're from, what you look like, where your parents are from. Treats the trainers first. Like he's a top class man. He to me, he's one of the best culture shapers right now in the world of pro sports. Oh, Big time, dude. Big for, time for yeah. them not to say what. Give I him want to get back in shape and try to make that team. I'd love to play for. Ron. Honestly, you go through a wall for that guy, and just like fourteen hundred and eighty four right Hall of Famer, games. get him in there. What are we doing? Yeah. He's a Hall of Famer for Take sure. my spot. But exactly. <laughs> uh, hey, I want to go back to because yeah. for that run yeah. though, I think you yeah. ended up playing in eight games, yeah. and, and you like even that. had back to back shutouts in, in, in twice. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, yeah, that's unbelievable. And, and you, you, you mentioned the visualization. Is that something that you always done throughout your career? I always did it since I was a kid, but I didn't really know what it was when I was young. I just, I, you know, you hear, you watch, read Sports Illustrated, all these things back in the day, the sporting news, hockey news, anything you could get your hands on, right? And you're hearing. And so I, I would always do that before tournaments, before big games and stuff. But at that time, what was really interesting is everything just felt really natural. And it all just kind of came together at the right time. And I was with the right group of the right people. As I said, look at the, you know, the players we had there, Jim Rutherford, Hall of Famer, uh, Roddy, Ronnie, Hedekin, like look at all these guys, Glenn Wesley, like we had a, cl- a class team, we had a good club, Old Dog, and all the Marty Jelena. But what was cool in my, I guess, in my own individual game was it. It was kind of like a. This is what I've been saying. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of a validation. I, I, I just I wanted a it. chance. I wanted people to feel like I, I was their guy, and then at that point, you felt that a hundred percent. And Paul Maurice was that way. All the coaches were that way. Jimmy Rutherford, like there was no undermining. There's no like we're gonna cannonball you. There's no we're gonna submarine. You know what I mean? And you guys know the difference. You guys know yeah. when, you're, when you're in a spot and where people. I mean, look at you. As I said, you can feel it. You I mean, can the, feel the difference. The next two seasons, you were the commandant. You and and that's you know you you can feel the difference and that to me I was always very cognizant of that and now you know on this side of the business and you guys are asking me even about TV or or about management or any of those things but I think that that's so important and that's such a big miss for a lot of people and you guys know exactly what I've talked about like you guys have worked in different places and you continue to work in different places and you know the people that know that and that respect that and you know the others that don't do you know what I mean oh for sure and it's and I try to say it in subtle ways and hope people are going to pick up on it. But a lot of times they don't pick up on it. Because imagine being in the room with Sid. You guys know what it's like to be in the room with Sid. And Sid's top class, amazing, one of the best ever at everything. But Sid would be like, really? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Taser, Kane, any of these greats. Like they'd be like, what's, what's going on here? You, you know, so I just find that the environment and the people side of it and how you treat people – that goes a long way for for how people perform, how they feel when they come to the rink. You don't want to be dreading going to the rink, no. right? You don't want to dread yeah. going to the studio. You don't want. And the people that cultivate the right environment. Look, I asked Jimmy Rutherford this yesterday. I go, Jimmy, what about the repeat in Pittsburgh? Because obviously Tampa has a chance. And 
And Jimmy's like, Kevin, I'll tell you what. I had to make sure people wanted to do it. Everybody other than Sid, I had to make sure they were on board. And if they weren't, I had to get them out of there. <laughs> that's the, that's Jimmy saying. You yeah. know what I mean? No, like, that's cool. I love that. Like, in his all... mind, he's going to be able to figure out if this guy's ready for not only the physical, but the mental battle 100%. it's going to take well, you, to repeat. You, 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 100%. You, you talked about the commitment from Rod the Bod. Like, like that's, what, that's kind of what it takes, and that's very similar to Sid, right? So totally. it's like <laughs> some guys aren't necessarily committed to, to giving that much of their life to the sport. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And, and And – you know, when you have everything to the detail, but you treat people right, You're gonna great get things it can yep. happen. Like, yep. great things can happen. I just wanted to ask, uh, did Paul Go. Maurice say anything after the game? Did he come up and, like, was he? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, yeah. He, uh, what did he, church, he said, hey, basically. church bells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. I, like, said, I said yeah. church bell, not the Liberty Bells. <laughs> but you know one thing that I would Liberty say? It, actually, here, oh, here's, here's one of them. Here's Crack. the way I'd characterize it, uh, Biz. Is any time I see him or any time he sees my parents, he this is the, the level of, of human he is. He'll always say, and he's always very complimentary and say, Kev saved my job. No shit. It's like, your son saved my job. And he'll tell me that openly. He's like, you saved my job. Because of that run in, in, in game five and, and how it's, oh, wow. And that's the level of class. And that's what I'm saying. Like, we have some awesome people in our sport, a lot of them actually. But people like that, like you were saying, you want to run through a wall for those people. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No. And, and, and I've had some of those people in TV, not as many of them, but I still have some of them. And that's why I mentioned earlier Mar- uh, Mark Jacobson or Shirelli Najak and John Shannon, some of these people, because, and there's others too, too many to mention, but um, the way that they appreciate you for all that you are, who you are, what you are, what you can do, it gives you wings instead of, it's, instead of getting pinpricked. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yep. a big difference between the two. You guys know. I remember watching that run, and I, I thought you were going to get back in because, I mean, you look at the numbers now. You were playing great. Were you thinking, yeah. shit, I might get back in during the yeah. final there? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. you were playing, <laughs> one, you were playing yeah. like maybe the best yeah. hockey team to ever be, be formed together as I well. I mean, that. They yeah. had like eight no- Hall of Famers, I think. You know what's crazy? Okay. So, so I talked to Shani about this because I played with Shani in Jersey toward the end of his career, consequently mine too, and, and with the Rangers too prior to that. Guys, you guys know going to Joe Lewis. <laughs> Bro, I played junior in the Joe. Because before, oh, Plymouth, before it was Plymouth, Plymouth Whalers, they were the Detroit Junior Wings. Oh. Jimmy Rutherford, GM. <laughs> Paul Maurice, head coach, right? And those teams were stacked. And I remember our bus pulling up. And, and big ups to, uh, to Wayne Primo because Prems was playing with us. And Keith was playing for the Red Wings, right? So we're like, wow, Keith is loaded. He's making two hundred fifty grand playing for the Red Wings. You know, I was getting thirty five dollars a week at On Sound. We thought, and after oh, yeah. the games, Keith would see Wayne. He'd hug him, give him a little, a little cash to take back. A little pretty like, impact, exactly. Give him a, rip it off for premium. It was all ones for the Rippers in Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to so, go to those ones. <laughs> so, so at that point, I was like, man. But anytime we played there since junior, I think I got, I think I had my first OHL win against them. But nonetheless, playing. At Joe, at the Joe, by the time the bus pulls up to the stairs outside, you're down two cop. <laughs> and and that team, that Red Wings team, oh. so to tie a bow on it, like you're skating now for a warm up. Oh, Ozzy. Oh no, it's Hashik. Oh, okay, no, it's Cujo. <laughs> All right, Lidstrom, he's there. Okay, who else they got back there? Oh, Chelly's back there. Oh, sweet. Oh, there's Eiserman. Sweet. <laughs> there's Shanny. Sweet. Lariat up. Oh, okay. And the wor- <laughs> and the worst part about that was you couldn't help it. And just the mystique of the Joe, the smell of the Joe. And I'll you got Holly out there chirping Holly's everyone. Holly's out there. Yeah. For, and, and here's the crazy part about it. I talked to Shani about it. He's like, you know what, Weeksy, you know what? You know what, Shady? We'd be out there and we'd, we wouldn't look at you guys on purpose because we knew you were looking at us. <laughs> so we wouldn't even look at you guys. We wouldn't look oh, at you can you. tell hey, when you're being hey, stared at. I swear oh, to God. You're unbelievable I'm impression. Who yeah, else you got? Yeah, like Rich Dulo, yeah. so, Who broke Dur? Who broke Dur? Marty, I can't do Marty. I don't know why. Uncanny, I can't do him. Um, but listen, I, I got to tell you, it, what was crazy about this is you were almost psyched out before the game started. Yeah. Before the puck dropped. But to answer you, I did think I was going to get back in. Yeah. Uh, it just never it never went that way. But again, here's where good organizations adjust, right? Because I was 27, I think, at the time. But they had a young stud in Cam Ward. And when they went back to win that one in 04, yeah. 
or sorry, 06, excuse me, yep. to win that one. Stahl was there. I think it was one Stahl, of his first years. Totally. They're like, oh, Cam Ward, you can kick. You're ready. No Let's big deal. Go. Get in there. He was 20. He was 20. So they didn't horse around the yep. next time around. They got it right. Who was his backup on that team? Was Marty it? Gerber. Gerber. Who was nice, too. Yeah. yeah. He and could he had kick played too. most of that year. Yeah. And Gerber oh, could shit. kick, too. So as you just said, Biz, you got some of those young guys in there with some of the grizzled vets. Doug Wade, who had an amazing career. Glennie Wesley, all those guys mixed in with some of the young. Ray Whitney, the wizard, the our wizard. boy. The you know, the wizard's awesome. You so, played with him in Florida when you broke yeah, in, too, Yeah, right? I love the wizard. Who was hey, your, I'm he, sorry, go he's ahead. awesome. No, him and his wife, Bridge, are great people. They yeah. are Who was your first notch. game against you? Like, you have vivid memories of it? I'm yeah, assuming? first game I got in was against Dallas on the road. They pulled Beezer, and I went in for the third period. They had five shots. And then the second one, my first start was in Ottawa. We ended up tying that 2-2 in overtime. I was like second star. But, guys, I got to tell you, and this is for the listeners, I couldn't win a game to save my life when I first got to the league. Like what a I, panic. Oh, I was 0-2, to, you know, whatever, game stars here and there. But 0-2, 0-4, 0-1, oh. and whatever it was, 0-6, 0-10, whatever it was. And if you, if you would have seen the coverage, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Like people talk yeah. about mental health, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Like, listen, yeah. I, 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 I was IHL goalie of the year, played half the year in the eye that year. Couldn't string a full 60 together at the NHL oh. level. And, you know, I wasn't really on exactly great teams or high-end teams, but whatever. Like, you, you wear it. You're the tendy. You want to kick for the boys. And some of those games I kicked in, some of them I was averaging, some of them I just couldn't string it together. And it was vile. Like, can't play, goalie of the future, can't this, can't what. And it was so mean-spirited. And just it started to really build and boil. And fortunately, I was able to get my first one and kind of get past that after the next year. But it was really hard. That was a tough time. And I think the biggest thing that I would say to the listeners is a lot of people look at, you know, these athletes and entertainers and musicians and people that, you know, even yourselves, you guys are doing this huge stuff. People don't understand the struggle. You know, people yeah, don't understand. Some days you're not doing right on a personal level. Totally. Yet you still have to get up and go perform. You still got to get up and perform. And, and you're not getting the results you want. You're thinking of all the people you're letting down. You know, you're not on your A game. You know, Biz, I'm sure you went into some games where, hey, Biz, this is going to be a physical game tonight. Like, we're going to need we're going to need you because that's going to be an X factor in the game. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, for sure. Yeah. This is not an all-skill team. Not much, but yeah, like, a couple times. No, but it's true. Like, yeah. we, we're going to need jam. We need you tonight. We need you on the forecheck. We need you, like, whatever the case may be. And if it doesn't happen or it didn't happen for you, you know, you, you, you were that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're like, fuck it the boys down man i wanted to so that's really hard that was a tough time but you always have to persevere that's one thing i'd say for a lot of the listeners you always want to persevere and the other goalies on that that team were all vets it was so you were the only young guy were you getting yeah. any help from the vets or were you kind of like you said you felt like you were on an island at, at yeah the time? no i didn't i didn't really get much help from vets at that point um yeah, I don't. I didn't Did feel. Did you like, find yourself sometimes distancing yourself just yeah. because you were kind of in this, in this maybe totally. a lonely, uh, a tough mental place? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Sucks. Yeah, and I mean, luckily, I have amazing parents and amazing sister and people around me at that time too. Friends I grew up playing minor hockey with that knew me when I had ten cents in my pocket going to a convenience store. You know what I mean? And you could lean on them and late night calls and 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 just get yourself back to a good place to where you, you have it in your stomach to go to the rink the next day. I mean, and that team did, but, you know, all due respect, that yeah. team did stink, stink in front of you. It wasn't like you were the problem yeah, no, on no, that no. team. I, I get that. But, too, but, you know, you there's a personal element to being a goalie, too. Your right. big thing is you want to do it for your teammates, right, and for the fans and the organization. You want you want to kick and, and win and give them a chance to win. So you wear that. But also it's kind of an individualized position. So imagine being a QB you don't want to throw picks all the time. And even if you're going to be, well, your receiver, did, what your tight end wasn't, you didn't get any coverage. It, it, it falls on you. It falls on you. It, you know what I'm saying? Like The goalies, like, no. they ask, what's your record? Exactly. Like, You've <laughs> got to figure that out. you got to find. the. So for me, in figuring that out at the NHL level, not in practice. In practice, I was stoning people, making these saves, doing this stuff. But um, unfortunately, I played a lot in the minors, in, in my time in the minors. But I just couldn't string it together right out of the, right out of the blocks. And it took me some time. I, I, excuse me, because I want to go yeah. back to Fort Wayne. I know one of our Twitter yeah. Twitter followers. I saw that. You. I saw now, that. Do, were you in the Kelly Cup that year? Because I could. I see wasn't, the... but they're in it. They're, they're they're in it this year. Okay. So ironically, um, the Fort Wayne Comets and, and Torch was there. Man, our boy Torch was there. He was uh, coach GM. He ran. He ran Fort Wayne. He was great. The Cronky, uh, the family there still owns it. The Frankie family, excuse me. The Frankie family still owns Fort Wayne. 
And ironically, like my girl's mom is from Fort Wayne, which I never knew at the time. Huh. Uh, she's from Indiana, so even though they grew up in Calgary, but her mom's from Indiana. So Fort Wayne was awesome. It was great. It was a great, great minor league town. They were amazing to my family when we were there. Uh, my dad was there a few times. They were great. I love that. I, I want to ask about Marty Brodeur because he's—I oh. don't think he's a, a guy who's great at talking about himself. He likes yeah. to deflect all the all the praise totally. and stuff. But yeah. I mean, you got a firsthand experience. Just what made what made him so special as a player, and what was he like off the ice as a guy? You know, it's funny. I I love that you asked me that because as we're talking about tension and tightness and you know environment or whatever, Marty was like this cable, that cable on your just like that, <laughs> loose, loose with it, easy with it, fluid. Now listen. Let's be real. They had a ton of success. He had a ton of success. The great Lou Lamorello was there. Lou respected him, you know, and he earned. You had Dano, Scotty Niedermeyer, like all the st- all those players, Patrick Eliash. But Marty himself, I think environmentally, it allowed him to be chill, and he's just very chill. Very, very, very easy. Like, I don't think I played with a goalie that never got psyched up for a game, at least that I could see, like him. He just showed up. He just and, showed like, he was up. So and just confident put, in how he went it's about. Like, th- I felt like that playing high school basketball. Yeah, I didn't feel like that playing pro or junior or NHL. And it's a good argument. He felt, he felt like that, like he was just at the Y, just playing pickup hoops. It, it's like it's not necessarily an argument, but you can talk. Like, is he like that because he's so good and the game does cause, come easy to him, or? Is he so good because of his attitude and because he's of able how, to stay and, calm? And, and, in those and, situations. Yeah, and it's like it's a combo, and, and like. Most people, the most successful people in the world, and I noticed it in hockey, is yeah. like it was never too high or too low. Yeah, like C- Crosby would like have a little bit of a spell, and he wouldn't really care, and then he'd yeah. have five points in a night, and it was just the same thing. Where I was, I've said this a million times in the show. I was like two assists. What's up, boys? How you doing? <laughs> Where's my contract? <laughs> and I'm like this, like, just staring down the GM on the bus. <laughs> Where the fuck's my deal, bitch? <laughs> Uh, you played six oh, that's minutes. Funny. And you, you had a second assist off. <laughs> that the is. Well, I was talking as if I was you, yeah, snapping thanks, around thanks. a couple <laughs> seconds. Hilarious. Assist. When you were in Jersey, yeah. you played for one of our more popular guests yeah. recently, Brent Sutter. Oh yeah, um, that was a good one you guys had with, with Sutter. Yeah, he was he was incredible. Yeah, Absolutely. that was a really good one. He's basically a Canadian. He showed a lot of his personality. We didn't get to see much of that <laughs> in Jersey. I wish we saw more of it. Seriously, um, because he was so he was wound so tight. But again, keep in mind, same thing. Like I was saying, this was his as much as he's been in the league and as much success and a great player he was. This was his first time coaching in the NHL too, you know. And he was leaving Red Deer. He owns him and his family own the team. They own the arena. They own the, the farms. He uh, said all. it was everything, his life savings. Jumbo totally. Tron, the whole thing. They put it all in. That part everything. of the story is like, people thought I had money. Yeah. It's like, no, no, I need this. Totally. It was a great entrepreneurial move for him, by him and his wife and their family. And, and brilliance, too. That, amazing. He didn't even really want to come to the NHL to coach. And, and Lou really pushed to get him. And what was interesting about it is we didn't see as much of his personality Hardly any that we got to see on with you guys. You guys brought it out of him, and I thought it was amazing. He was so funny, and it was yeah, good to see. Fly. Yeah, he was exactly. He was on the floor. He was unwound. He was just chill. But uh, hell of a storyteller too. Unreal, unreal. Those it was unreal. But he listen. He's he's helped a lot of players, man. Like there's a lot of guys. You guys, Colby, obviously, but James Reimer, uh, who's the big my, Darcy Kemper. Matt Dumba, like they produce a lot of players in the league yep. quietly yep. that have come out of out of the deer, as they call it, um, in Is Red that Deer. Where so, played? I, yeah, played? I think Nuge played there too. Yeah, yeah, I think Nuge. I don't know new, if he was I, with. I, I don't know if he new. was under. No, he was Regina. He was Regina. Was he Regina or there? I think he was Let's Red check. Deer, but I don't know if Sutter was. They, they there. were yeah. comparable to. Uh, it was Red Deer and Cologne. Everly was 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 Regina. I think Re- Red Deer and Kelowna were kind of maybe Correct. Red Deer a little bit more before Kelowna, but yes. they were the, the London Knights of the West. Oh yeah, just Big always time. very dominant, producing tons of great talent. Boyd Absolutely. Gordon played there. You mentioned yep. Army making uh, a lot of bread there too. Don't don't kid yourself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah he was Red Deer. He was Red Deer. Yeah, a lot of bread there. We can't talk that's about bread that. Deer. I got in trouble for talking about the, the London Knights like that. No, well, listen. Here, here's, here, but let's be real. Like those, same thing with the Hunter family. Those guys invested in London. Yeah. And they, they spent a lot of money to buy London. They treat those players same thing. They treat those players first class there. You know, and that's a factory, as you know. London's a factory in terms of producing players. But they treat their players world class, man. They, they really do.
Uh, talking about coaches, I think we glossed it over in Tampa Bay, but you played for Torts for quite a while. What was that? What was that adventure like, given his reputation? Yeah, Torts. I, interestingly, I had Torts when I was in the. Um, I had Torts when I was in the Spengler Cup in Switzerland first, because Steve Shields got called up to Buffalo. Rochester needed a goalie. They were playing in the Spengler Cup in Switzerland, and they asked Florida to loan me there. So I played for him there. He coached yeah, Canada. That, no, he, it was Rochester Americans went yeah. there because they had won the AHL. So they went as kind of a U.S. entry. Cool. Yeah. It was sweet. It was fun. Um, that was a fun tourney. That was a really fun tourney. There we had we had a blast. I think it was goalie of the tourney. You it was fun. MVP, right? Yeah, yeah it was a fun. Deal. It was a fun time there. But Torts in general, I think one of the things with Torts is he cares. He loves the game. He's passionate. He wants his team to play with an edge. He wants guys to play hard. He wants guys to respect the game, which I respect. I think the one the one challenge is the world has changed so much. Do you know what I mean? I thought he did a pretty good and job. I thought he did a bit, exactly, exactly. As it went along, yeah, I really think so too. And I was for say, what that, he had before. It's totally pretty, pretty good at what he's turned absolutely, into. absolutely, and that was important. And that was important for him to be able to do that and make those adjustments to coach today's player because today's world is different. We know that. Like it's it's a different it's a different era yeah. in so many different ways. And I think toward the latter part there, he did a really good job of that. He really did. Um, one of the things I had down for when you were with the Lightning is a couple of years after you left, they end up getting over the hump. But you got to see Le Cavalier, St. Oh. Louis, Brad Richards at a very young age. Could you see money? Yeah, you, you saw it coming. All money. All look, guys. I told you I played in the eye, and when I was in the Fort Wayne or when I was at the Detroit Vipers, I saw Marty St. Louis and Eric Perrin. <laughs> Dirt. They were so dirty, so good, so 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 good. And listen, you know, we want to also, as much as we're entertaining, as much as you guys entertain and, and we, we share stories, but you also want to inspire a lot of your listeners, right, and your viewers and stuff. This is a clean version, so don't take this down the wrong road. <laughs> we're in the shower post-game playing in Tampa. Marty St. Louis, you know, we see, you know, I, I think I could do more to help the team, you know. <laughs> I'm like, Marty, I agree, man. You don't have to sell me. I played against you in the eye. I thought you were dirty. We had him on the fourth line. <laughs> That's crazy. Martin. I mean, this is, a, this, is yeah. Calgary, this is after Calgary. This is after Calgary. I didn't know, I didn't know that. Yeah, Calgary bro, caught him. Yeah, bro. Fourth line. I played against. He was in Cleveland in the eye. He was him and Perrin were dirty. I'm like Marty. I know how good you are. He's like I don't know. You know. I said, if you take shit, you're gonna get shit. Same thing we talked about. I said, go and tell Ludzie because I'd played for Ludzie in 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 Detroit with the Vipers. I'm like, go tell Ludzie. He went and talked to Ludzie. I think it was two years later, he was NHL MVP. Basically, he's like, just give me, I mean, who knows? Give me a chance. Yep. Let me at least try. And yep. that was when. Yeah, and credit, credit to Ludzie, man, for doing it and being open minded because everybody had written him off. Well, and, and you know for a player I mean? to have the jam to actually go have that conversation. Yeah. Maybe if at it that never point, happens. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's what, exactly, At Biz. that point, it was like, what's worst case? I already, Calgary's got rid of me. I'm fourth line totally. here. Totally. Exactly. I got nothing to lose. I got nothing to lose. And listen, hey. Uh, as well, credit to Torts because Torts had a big hand in that too. Yep. Once Torts took over, you got to give it where it's due. Torch, but that that Tampa group really allowed him to flourish and allowed him to become. Now he's a Hall of Famer. I think Richie might get in too. Richie was amazing. Richie was a rookie that year. He was twenty. I think he had sixty three, sixty five points or something. Yeah, sixty sixty two. I think sixty two points. Day, yeah. Sick. Like yeah. patient dishes. Read the game so well. So it was the perfect storm. They yeah. got their, their diamond in the rough. Totally. They had their top end prospect. That, and, and then, I mean, Richard was still, yeah, Vinny, Vinny was what? Was he first overall? Yeah. And Vinny yeah. was money already. You could see it. He just had to learn, but he was already money. Yeah. Pavel Kabin on the back end. Then they ended up trading for Danny Boyle, too. Then they traded for Habby Bullen, much to my demise, but it helped me, anyway, as I told you earlier, helped me improve and get better. And they just built this squad. And you know what? Here, here's the thing, too. Everybody, and I know you guys being from Mass, and, and for us being from Ontario or people from the West or people from wherever, Minnesota, Michigan, Illinois, let's say. We know everything about hockey. No, 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 no. Those, those teams can't win because it's a non-traditional hockey market. I got news for you. Tampa is a sick place to play. They've oh, got a dynasty God. going right now. Yeah, no yeah. state tax. Yeah. No state tax either. We talked about it. Right, like Vegas already, their money, like you, like every single one of the Sun Belt teams, close your ears, biz. 
but every single one of the Sun Belt teams, with the exception <laughs> of the to this point, to this point no, man. We're yeah. done. Let's wrap this no, up. No, to this no, point. Right. Just, man, just up to the minute. Not that it's not possible. But, hey, sh- every one of those teams has been to a cup. Yeah. Every I one mean, of them. Yeah, Dallas has won one. Carolina won one. Tampa won one. L.A., uh, Anaheim, all these Sun Coast teams. So Sun as much as teams. people try to hate on them, you got to give you got to give people their due. They... I mean, they're, they're doing an awesome job in Tampa. Their owner, Jeff Vinnick's done an amazing job. Uh, yeah. One other thing I had written down here. I know we went pretty long, but uh, you, were, your time. you were traded for uh, Bure. Yeah. That was, I mean, at summertime, you get the phone call. Or... Oh, it was, I mean, I knew because I wanted, a, I wanted a one-way contract. I had earned a one-way contract. I had been in the minors. I had done all these things. Same thing I go back to earlier. All these other guys were getting one-way deals like candy. Yep, one-way, <laughs> 550, 650, 750. And they came to me skimmy, and they're like, ah, well, we could give you 400 over 75. I'm like, what are we doing? So anyway, so yeah. Over so I, 75. <laughs> honestly. Yeah, right? <laughs> Wits can't help himself. So on principle, I, I went to – that's how I went to Detroit and played in the minors. But um, being a part of that deal was crazy because he's such a star. And we had Jovo, Sam Gagne – or sorry, Dave Gagne's dad, myself, and I think Mike Brown. But what sucks is when you're a part of those deals, the expectations are always through the roof. You always, anytime you're in one of those deals, that's almost a new win, no win situation. On, yeah. But it got yeah. me my one way, and it got me more games in the league, which I was happy with. Nice. Bingo. Yeah. Well, this was outstanding week. Yeah. We done? Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a blast to catch up You guys up rapping you guys. already? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you guys have changed. Now you're corporate now. You're in Forbes. You're in no, you know NY Post. We got, we got we later. We're interviewing, yeah. um, who do we have later? Yeah, George have? LaRock. Well, they just broke uh, no Sabres name uh, Don Granado, next head coach. Uh, they just broke official. that. You know what? I think that's a great hire. Yeah. He, I think I mean, Donnie. They, they look like a different team under him. I think Donnie did an outstanding job there, boys. And the boys love playing for him, as you could see. Hey, remember. Those guys were in the carpet like dirt. They were as down as you've seen anyone be down in this league in 20 years. I felt bad. Right? It got yeah, it was, sad. It was, well, like, how many in a row great their it? fans are. Oh, yeah. They, we know, they do deserve We better. know. Like, those bo- like, I talked to guys in that group. Like, we, it was a problem getting up to go to the rink, like to find motivation for those guys. Oh, and he God. was able to pick those guys up. I think he did an awesome job. So nice on you. Yeah. Biz getting I was bra- this, I bra- breaking news. That was Briz's Via Twitter. Twitter. Let All me right, ask well, you we- now, let me jam you yeah. guys up on the record since we're on here. Sure. You guys jam me up. So I'm going to jam you back up in a good way too, as you did me. What's the latest? Cause you guys don't like to talk about yourselves and you're doing amazing things. And I want to know what does myself. <laughs> <laughs> What's like who? It's like who? You, he's like, who are you talking about? I can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but with all the stuff you guys are doing, and I got to tell you, uh, I get asked time and time again. I read this article. I read this in the Global Mail. I read this in the National Post. I read this in USA Today. I read this in Forbes. What is it? Tell me about those guys. My my to be father in law shortly has the Pink Whitney. Literally. In our last, we were at our Miami house, I think last week. It's in the freezer. <laughs> they were there for like five months. That's where I leave mine. It's in the freezer. It's nice. It's I'm chilled. Gonna, I goes swear down to smooth. God. Well, yeah. just, just to hop in, you kind of mentioned yeah. it earlier how, how empty yeah. you were left feeling in, in some of the situations that yeah. you were in where sure. maybe people ahead of you had control. Right. That was one thing that I ended up talking to Brant Myers when he was with the LA organization where yeah. he would help out the guys transition. And he said, you know, when I got out of playing and, and everything got cleaned up, he ended up creating his own LLC. That way Amazing. he had his own control. And, and could you know build people rather than be under people's control? Hundred percent. And it comes off Couldn't as negative more. when I say under people. No, no, no. Control. I know exactly what but, you mean. But like I don't, I can't. The, the mainstream media stuff is hard for me because it's mm-hmm. not naturally how I talk. I talk how I talked in the locker room my whole right. life. So we, so I just wanted to eventually do my do my own thing. And thankfully for me that these these guys had already started this podcast and mm-hmm. we were able to kind of do things our own way. And with the fans that came associated with that, they kind of direct as to what they like and don't like. And, mm. and everything really is just taken on a mind of its own. And we're extremely grateful. And we, we talked about it last night, like how funny it is. Cool. We got G, who's, you know, a young, the younger guy in the crew who's kind of keeping us uh, informed with what all the younger kids like. We yep. got R.A., who's, you know, lived, Sam, a, lived the life of a thousand men. Episodes. He snuck into yeah. 10, 10 uh, <laughs> you know, cup parties. And, That's awesome. you know, he, he grew up the way that he did. And then, of yeah. course, <laughs> you know, with, with the way he played and has his credibility. And then I'm kind of like the clown. So it, it's been a it's been a great ride, and and you know all that stuff is, I don't want to say I don't want to say it's noise. It's just I guess documentation of some of the crazy things that have happened along the way. How just are in, some of those things? How are they going? So th- I stepped into about <laughs> I, I 
there was a pallet of money when I walked in. Oh yeah, it was up to my knees. No, no, no. But how, how's everything going? <laughs> well, it's been going good. And like, uh, listen, we, you we, guys tell Forbes, tell us, tell me. I want to know how things it, are going. It, it, I'm a it, businessman. It's been going good because we've been able to, been able to add resources. Like we hired Sean, who's a, yeah. a, a videographer, and he spends time editing. So now we're able to get the podcast out on, on YouTube faster. Cool. So with with all the success of everything else, we've been able to like reinvest and and, and do more crazy things. We're gonna start doing more live events like ball hockey. Sick. And uh, yes. I don't. Know do it right here at I don't Times know Square if, you, if you I, guys are serious. I don't know if you'd ever strap on the pads. Uh, maybe we can no, get you for you're our done playing goal. Yeah, tennis ball only. Okay, my, no street maybe hockey Milik? ball dog. Maybe Milo. <laughs> yeah, exactly, we'll Milo. Exactly. The balls won't be hanging but, like church <laughs> bells if they take a street hockey. That's ball. what the cups. Uh, for. But we'll, exactly. We're, we're, exactly. We're gonna do some both uh, cups, bro. Yeah. I rock two, two. You want two cups? Yeah, Jim Whoa. Rivnack. Jim Rivnack, NHL goalie with Washington. Packing heat down there. Yeah, Jim, Jim Rivnack <laughs> told me in the minors I got hammered one night in Rochester. He's like. What are you doing? You gotta be. You gotta wear it to you. Gotta, I'm like, all right, I got you. Anyway, we'll Two see off that. Go ahead. Go. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. no. We no, also it's, hired yeah, um, yeah. a new Pink Whitney social media. Julia. Uh, Julia. Nice me. man. So so now like you know you're getting the Pink Whitney Instagram and Twitter buzzing a little bit more and yeah you know. It, What's crazy is just like how big the YouTube and Instagram is now with younger kids. I sound so old saying it. I don't have a a, a public Instagram, but our YouTube channel keeps growing and growing and so many younger kids yeah i think that maybe ne- necessarily wouldn't know about our show but kind of learn about whether it's our golf matches or the behind the scenes when we come amazing here. by the way it's great so yeah. it's like to just get in with this company and then be involved with how the internet's growing and where it's at now it's like any new channel we can open i'm not good at opening it but then to get involved i've literally just never just gotten going. a phone call for anything we've tried to do regarding so the call cool. it's they just they hey go, awesome. go do it you know what though, guys? It what's really cool about that is it it comes off that way too. Like it, the, it's very authentic. It's real of real, and people appreciate that. There's it's unfiltered, which is really cool because people feel like they're getting you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. They're on the bus with you. They're on the road with you. They're on the course with you, and you've become a, not only from a pop culture standpoint, but people get to they get to really enjoy you guys in their everyday lives, which is really cool. Yeah. And, you know? and and also bringing out uh, you know other players and their personalities. Oh yeah, of course. I, I feel like so many it's guys have so many great stories, yeah. and, and, and and people want to people want to know about these guys that they were cheering for all for these years. years and spending money on. They're like, yep. you know, I, I even had it written down here, like like Dave Anderchuk. Like I've heard him be interviewed before. I played but, with the White Horse. Yeah, and I just yep. I don't. W- I wonder what he's like as a person, a guy awesome. that scored that many power play goals, Amazing. and a guy that I grew up watching when even when he was playing in Buffalo. They call, so they it's call just him Wood. it's just more yeah. genuine curiosity. To be honest about yep. about yeah. uh, uh, especially from the podcast form of getting guys on, so yeah. uh, hey, we appreciate the compliment, Thank man. You, yeah, and, and right you, back at you, man. You're you're a you horse, guys. and you talked about the work ethic, and you know all those days in a row you had to work to get where you are. And I mean, uh, it's uh, it's it's well deserved. Well, thanks so much, boys. Thank you. It's I'll been a pleasure for all of us. See. Thank you. Boys. Maybe we'll get you in a sandbagger. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I try. I we'll get them sweating in no time. You oh and you and uh, let's Jose do that Theodore. in the winter, though. <laughs> let's let's do that in the winter. Huge thanks to our boy Weeksy for coming in and hanging out with us a couple weeks back in New York. Outstanding interview. Hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to him. Can't wait to see him on TV on ESPN next year. So we got him on before the whole Kraken situation happened. He crushed it on that uh, the whole uh, expansion draft. I mean, although it was a bit of a shit show given that it, most of it was spoiled, I thought he was bouncing around town doing his thing. Um, but I... On top of the goalie thing, when I had a little bit of hockey trivia, because he was a very opinionated on the Mark Andre Fleury situation. Um, who was the last goalie to be traded after winning the Vesna in the NHL? Anyone who thinks of it first, say it. He's looking at me, but this is for all. I just wanted to bring it up. No, oh, no, all right, I, I, I'm I okay. Guess it Dominic Hasek. No. Oh, okay. hold on, hold on, hold Dominic on. Dominic No. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Merles. That's a- Dominic. Oh. Oh. Dominic Hasek was traded to the Red Wings in 2001 after winning the Vesna. But to be fair, he wanted out of Buffalo. It was like it was. It was and a I remember, shocker. I remember uh, <laughs> that deal he signed with Detroit. R.A. Sorry, Buffalo. Now's not the time. <laughs> hey, I remember that deal he signed with Detroit. If they won the cup, he, he had a million dollar bonus. I remember at the time just being like, "Holy shit!" And they won it. So yeah, I forgot. I I, I shouldn't say I forgot. I didn't know that the Mur. 
Legend. That's just typical Buffalo. That's where, oh, yeah. where I'm, yep. a, I'm a Bills fan, so I, you know I'm used to it. Oh, Josh Allen, dude. dude. You see that? A lot of people forget that he Hosick played for Blackhawks first, didn't he? Yep. Blackhawks yes. first. A lot of people don't know about that either. Behind Eddie. Good trivia Eagle. guy, Eddie Merles, Eagle. Yeah. Yeah, sports I was just bringing that right. up going back to the last podcast. We were talking about the whole Mark andre Fleury fiasco. And Merles, I mean, we, you know, we talked about it and how like, crazy it is that, you know, he's one of these, like, the nicest guys associated to the game. And on top of that, surpasses it with his talent. And yet, kind of, oh, he's kind of getting shafted a little bit, given too his nice. career. It's kind of he's a too, yeah, he's like too nice of a guy. I remember he, I was on Pittsburgh when we drafted him, so he was 18 years old. And every morning he would come and ask me for, like, a ride to the rink. Like, Matt, can you give me a ride to the rink? And I'm like, yeah, dude, you're the number one pick. Of course I'm driving you to the rink. And it, yeah. But every day he would ask me, he would that thank me. That was how me. Uber was created. Merles is, yeah. Merles is That's like, when Uber started. Merles is yeah. like, wait, I wanted to ask him if I could pick him up and drive him to the <laughs> <Yeah>. rink. <laughs> Like Merles, you're still you're not on the team anymore. Stop driving Flurry to the ring. Get away from Merles him. Got sent down. He's commuting from Wilkes Barre just to drive Flurry to the ring. <laughs> they sent him down. He's like, I can't leave. I drive Flower to the ring, guys. Yeah. 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 I'll get you a one way. Mm. <laughs> I, I was trying anything. I was trying anything to stay up there, as you guys know. All right, boys. Uh, at Labatt, they don't care if you're good or bad at most things in life. They only care if you're good at beer, being yourself, and not pretending to be somebody you're not, Paul. And if you are, they're good with you. <laughs> After all, if you choose Labatt Blue Light, you're good at the most important thing there is, beer. We already know how good you are at watching hockey. Be good at beer, too, with pristine Canadian Pilsner Labatt Blue Light. We're going to be working with Labatt, Labatt Blue all year. We have some exciting content coming up, so grab a pack and enjoy. And we want to send a huge thanks to Labatt for sponsoring Hockey Fest this weekend in Detroit. So make a great weekend better. Be sure to grab some blue lights to enjoy the game with. I drank Even though baseball's the only really boring ass game in town right I now. I drank a gazillion. Yeah. A gazillion this weekend. Yeah, a lot of pink Whitney, a lot of blue lights this weekend. But uh, a couple other hockey notes to get to here. Uh, Pierre Luc Dubois is going to win number 80 this season in honor of former teammate uh, Matisse Kiv who who is uh, killed in that tragic fireworks accident. Uh, earlier this summer. Uh, Anders Nilsson, who most recently played with Ottawa in the uh, 2019-2020 season, retired after seven NHL seasons due to post-concussion syndrome and neck neck issues. So we wish him good health and hopefully he feels better after this. That's a a tough way to go out for guys, but we wish him the best. Uh, Pittsburgh named Andy Kyoto team goaltending coach. Cheezer. <laughs> Cheezer. Oh, that my carried God. us to the Calder Cup this final. Have we got him back. on the podcast? No, yet? we've never had him. This guy was a legend in net. We were we were in Wilkes Barre, and like Mo said, Flurry's there, right? It's a lockout year. Number one goalie, right? Your number one pick. He's the future. But Kyoto played so good. He stole the job. This guy was a force in the playoffs. Got us to the Calder Cup Finals where we lost to Milwaukee. We got swept. They were a wagon. You guys got swept that year? Got swept yeah, by Milwaukee, yeah. So you played in Milwaukee. Was that the first time you'd ever played away in Milwaukee? Yeah, because I, I played college that year. So I was just there for the playoffs. So we never even ended up playing them one time when I was up in my American League career. Really? It was yeah, at, so I Milwaukee's never, a great city. I know. That, Sneaky yeah, great yeah, city. Great, and great obviously time. you'd play They there. love drinking time. there. Yeah, I've been there a couple times. But, um, but I had a legendary story, actually, from Milwaukee. This guy, Chris Derno, he played there. So when we got into I town, that San name. Antonio, he wanted to go out to, like, see his old teammates and, like, just go to his old bars. But, like, the coach is like, you guys can't go out. So he puts on, like, going out clothes like this and then puts his track suit on over it and, like, zips it up. So he's, like, walking down to the lobby in his track suit. So every, all the coaches see him. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going out to get, like, Gatorade and stuff. Gets outside, rips off the – stashes it in the bushes. Get the NBA Go- start. He's, he's, like like he's like a girl that goes to Lollapalooza. When they do the intros of the – when they pull off the, the – what do they call those? The tearaway pants? Yeah. <laughs> he's like – Outside of the hotel, once he gets past the coaches, yep. and then so then he goes out, has himself a night, comes back at like three in the morning, goes into the bushes, puts it back on, zips it up, so if anybody sees him, it, I went, it I went for a ten mile run. Yeah, it was a legendary <laughs> move in Milwaukee because that's what he knew it was a time there. You didn't meet him out. No, I did not go out that night. Wow, I did not he was he was washed with the binoculars. I was keeping it from pro. the balcony <laughs> the whole night. 
Cra- uh, just crave, craving it on the road. The AHL Board of Governors has approved the qualification rules and format for the 22 called the, called the Cup playoffs. A total of 23 teams will qualify for the postseason when the regular season ends. They're going to have five rounds of playoffs. So hopefully we'll get that back next year. We missed a lot of minor league hockey last year, a lot of hockey last year. Seriously. Uh, our boy, the big rig, he threw out the first pitch of the Cardinals game the other day. How was it? St. He, also got bounced. he also got bounced at the quarterfinals at a roller hockey tournament recently. Did he? he? But he wins the Stanley Cup third in a row, and the next thing you know, blink of an eye after going on this Cannon Champa Bay Fest of gas and beers, two weeks later, I want to say he was in the national championship tournament of, of roller hockey. Was he? I don't know. Ask Grinelli. The guy from Boston probably beat him that we yeah. met. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Marshawn, that team. Marshawn beat him. But no, he. Yeah. I, I didn't actually see the pitch, but he threw it to Ozzie Smith, who was like a, a, oh, a wow. hero of his. I mean, I know you guys are younger, but he was a shortstop in St. Louis. Oh, forever. do you remember his Hall flips of Fame, he used yeah. to do when he went out? This yeah. guy was a freak with the glove. Probably, I feel like, yeah. Mar- gems. I feel yeah. like Maroon's the, the new Brett Hall. Like He gets to be oh. the drunk, fun guy. Yeah, and he's like, I just want three cups in a row. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> Have a statue of him in St. Louis, too. Uh, I don't know if you saw the tweet the other day from Bet the Pucks, the Twitter account we have with top 10 most profitable money line teams last season. There was only one team on the top 10, number six, that wasn't a playoff team last oh, year. Who was it, Merles? <sighs> I mean, you didn't get the email? Not bring it up, you didn't get the email, Merles? It was Actually, Ottawa. I saw yep. it. Yeah, RA's dark R-A's horse. Love and his pesky he sense. loves the pesky oh, sense. Oh. He brought this up. You picked them to win the cup, R.A. No, Come fucking, on. I pick. I put a future on them to win the cup. I didn't pick them to win the cup. <laughs> you know, this, you're a gambler. You know the difference. But I, they, I think they were twenty. They might have won twenty games last year. At least eleven of their games, they covered the puck line though, the reverse puck line. So they were a huge money maker last year. So have you looked at it? Did you see any odds for the cup down downstairs at all? Uh, I didn't see it down there yet. Okay. Um, but you know what happened last time I came on? I said I liked the Jets, and then we saw what happened there. So I don't want to. I don't want to make any cup predictions yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Biz had to cut off his force if he didn't do it. Yeah. Toronto and get out of the first round Sunk. again. Uh, all right, boys. We are bringing back a segment we haven't done for yes. a while. It's the last episode of the year. Like we said, there's not a lot of hockey to talk about. We're all kind of a little loosey goosey, goofy right now. So we're going to bring back the old segment. Listen to questions. We got them submitted earlier. We're going to have some fun with it. But first, if you refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash chicklets, you can get a $100 cash bonus. Terms and conditions apply. Earnest offers low-rate student loan refinancing, and you can check your rate risk-free in just two minutes. With Earnest, you get radically flexible payments, and you can pick your loan term. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans into a simple monthly payment. And if you have questions, you can even talk to a real live human at Earnest for help. Is it a time you stop feeling overwhelmed by your student debt? Earnest is offering our listeners a one hundred dollar cash bonus. Refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash chicklets. Once again, terms and conditions do apply. Well, boys, we haven't tossed it this one. I was gonna hop long, in here and yeah, say I consider this kind of like a trivia type segment. And uh, did you get uh, Grinelli on the last Dozens episode? Oh, my God. I'm so glad you brought this up. Oh, my God. And your responses to it. So for people who didn't witness this, the Dozen is a trivia game that Barstool plays, that Chicklets, we have a team, we go on. Grinelli got called in on Phone a Friend. And the question was... It's like, want- who wants to be a millionaire? You get a Phone a Friend. Yes. And it was a hockey question. Do you want to say the question, Mike? No, because I barely heard the question because oh, I was sitting at dinner. Oh no, 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 no. Time out. And for you guys to... Biz, the other day, you didn't even know who the Chicago Blackhawks goalie was. So you can't even chirp me for this at all. Well, there, there's a difference, though, with, of being on the spot and it, also the fact that you get to absorb the question and also answer it. And the fact... I'll say this. I would have gotten that one, but that's very short-sighted. You don't get but to read ha- it, though. That's the tough part. But it's how it all it. went down what was the most funny part. No, and wit, yeah. I'll let you take it well, over. Well, no, Mike. So the question was like... It was who what, is the what, who is an Arizona uh, uh, a person who's the who was, Calgary Flames tenth overall draft pick in the 2010 draft, who was born in Scottsdale, Arizona. So Grinelli is on the spot, couldn't hear the question wait, apparently, so, and then he ends up he ends up answering Sean Monahan, who's a Canadian guy. <laughs> listen, hey, listen, I've had I didn't my, even get the year right. I've had my fuck ups, but whatever. Okay, but what happens though is. 
fights his team, who he was playing for on the dozens, which is an unbelievable game show. He gives the answer, ah. the other team gets a chance to rebuttal and get the point. <laughs> So fights makes the mistake, and I hope we've already rolled the clip. Is if you hang up the fucking phone, bud? All right, they're going to call Mike Grinelli. Big one. Got a freaking answer, John. How are you, Grinnell? What's up, babe? I'm on the dozen. I got an NHL question. A top ten pick by the Flames in 2016, hailing from Scottsdale. A, a top ten pick by the Flames in 2016. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm going to say Sean Monahan. Sean Monahan. That's that's it. Yep, I'm going by Glennie's reaction. It looks like yep. you got that one right. <laughs> We're gonna go Sean Monahan. Final answer, please. Oh, no! No! <laughs> was that a fake out, boss? <laughs> no, I thought it was Sean Monahan. Um. Yeah, anything, boss? Fuck me. Ten seconds. Wait, wait. Final answer. All time. time gap. I didn't know Fucking kidding me! Thank you, Grinnell. Thank you, thank you, Mike, thank you, Mike Grinnelli. Okay. And Grinnelli, okay, I, I didn't think of that. Grinnelli, Grinnelli, all of a sudden after Grinnelli this knows the game. Stupid on the spots reply, and all the wheels turning at the fact he's probably at dinner, whatever it may be. <laughs> he's like, "Oh no, it's Matthew Kachuk." And you can see, I think it was Glenny Balls. Balls just wrote up. He goes, "Matthew Kachuk." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they would have had no him. goddamn clue who the pick was, and then Grinelli finally comes to, gives it, and fights. Is like, no, <laughs> no, yelling into his phone. But in my opinion, hang up the phone fights. It's on you. Grinelli was put in a tough jam. He fucked up initially, but he eventually came to and found the answer. <laughs> so it was a fucking shit show. I don't clip. know if anyone. It's a great clip, and Grinelli's been taking a lot of heat. Oh, I'm sorry, Ari. I just probably, kicked him. That probably doesn't hurt, but it's Did I explain that pretty well? Yeah, you explained pretty it good. phenomenally. It was, a great, it was a great live I moment. Had, good I, clip. I hadn't thought of giving flights, fights part of the blame, but still. He should have hung up the phone. I just thought you knew Monaghan was Canadian, but fair enough, fair I did, enough. I don't you, think you, I even heard okay. the Scottsdale part. And, okay, okay, I fair. I don't know. Fair, fair. I thought it was a layup. I guess, t- yeah, because you you, I mean, you you live in Scottsdale. I think That's maybe you, the uh, Dale. you were dialed in there. The Dale. RA's new Daytona. All right, all right, Hamilton. We have any good questions? Sometimes the uh, questions yeah, here. That's the thing. Sometimes there's the same old ones like, ooh, who are your dream guests? Like, ooh, ooh, we'll mar- fart, fart, yeah, fuck, marry, kill, blah, blah, blah. It's like, we don't want to fuck any of each other, marry each other, or no. kill each other. So that, that answer is yeah, all 17 it's, it's of those. all dudes. And Gee, actually, I, I got a most of you on Twitter. I don't know if you saw any on Instagram. I kind of scrolled through it earlier, but I don't know if any caught your eye, but I'll rattle them off, good or bad. This is a quick one. Can the lightning three Pete wit? No. G- Biz. No. Merles. Yeah, I think they can. Fucking right they can. Why couldn't they? I just think uh, they lost a legitimate line that was like just such a yeah. difference maker for them. Yes. And I think so many teams got better. And, yes, they can, but th- I am not picking them as I they al- did last I year. I also think the, like, the condensed schedule and like the, f- the, f- the physical nature of it, like these guys got to be worn down. There's only so much these guys can carry into the off season. I know Cooch had the fucking basically the whole season off, but I'd love to see their odds right now. Yeah, um, this is a good one. If you guys could have played for any NHL team other than the ones you played with, who would you choose? Merles, we'll go to you. I would have done. I would have loved to do one of the New York teams, Rangers or Islanders, just being from New York and. I guess Buffalo is New York, but that's a little further away from my family. Just so my family could have been, and, and it's the safest. Really, my family could have been really close to get to more games. What? I think I've always said Chicago. I just think that I saw it early, maybe because I saw it my rookie year when there was like eight thousand people in there. As Adrian Acorn, you could like yell over to people in the stands, and then I just remember. As they got better and just seeing what happened there, like the crowd, the anthem, the city. I love that city. Uh, I, I would have picked the Blackhawks. Leafs. 
Shaka. Uh, we're not done. R.A. and Grinelli, other than the Bruins, who would it be? Grinelli? L.A. Kings. Newport Beach is awesome. You don't live in Newport Beach when you play for L.A., but it is sick. <laughs> Well, you li- well, well, that's I mean, an- he could if you, you wanted New- to. Well, you could. Well, no, 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 just, anyway. no, no, I'm saying like Manhattan Beach. Manhattan, I, I, Manhattan Beach. That's the one I would have picked. Yeah, Manhattan that, Beach. I, I wasn't chirping you at all. I, was just I think saying, he'd take any beach at this point. Yeah, exactly. He, he'd play for the Ducks or the Kings. He, <laughs> he, he, he would commute exactly. if it meant cheaper real estate. San Diego Gulls, I'll that's take That's the it. mind frame he's in, but yeah. And I th- yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. I would, for the historical aspect, I would probably say Philadelphia just because it's like... Great you had the hat town. on. You had the hat on too. Doing all yeah, I did have the hat. Tournaments, uh, but, 100%. but modern day answer probably Tampa Bay. I mean, you know, you guys know I'm a Florida State guy. Tax. Love it's the Gulf Day Coast, Daytona Beach. Well, oh, of course, Biz. No state tax. No state I mean, tax. a lot of draws to Tampa. Whether they're good or bad, I'd love to play. You know, what's another one I would pick is Nashville. I oh, fell yeah. in love. Oh, yeah. I fell in I, love when we went yeah, there in 2017. I, I could handle that at 28, not at 18, though, Nashville. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I would be traded that's by the time I was 21 if I was fucking in Nashville. If I can trade me after the draft party. Uh, let's see. Question for Biz and Wit. What was the biggest cringe moment in the show? What was your biggest cringe moment in the show? Wow. Morals is here, too, so. Wow. I mean, probably if I, I, Buddy, I, I have, have so 30, many, so have many cringe moments. I. <sighs> All right. Nothing jumps. I mean, Grinelli's question to Jack Eichel. <laughs> Definitely. That's got to be top three of all time. I wasn't here for that. Buddy. Does it mean in the show or in the show like the NHL? Or just no. the show? Oh, I think they mean the podcast, right? Or do they mean being in the show? No, it's got to be probably just for you two because it says question for business and what. Yeah, but you so. didn't play in the show. That's why it's hockey. Right. That's why I, that's feel, why I figured no, I mean, during, during our NHL career. Oh, I'm sorry. No, cringe five. No, I'll no, just take the ricochet. It was I a was, terrible question. Yeah, I, was, I thought that was Oh, I don't know. No, I mean. So, I, so, I, so I, I, I can give, see why me I'll reading give, it. Yeah. I'll give mine in like most recent memory. I got asked to host like a, the opening of like a wedding for like a, a friend of mine. I'm like it, I had to like I didn't know I didn't know the Hold backstories the to a lot of these hosts, and I was essentially doing these like live ad reads. <laughs> and I was that's but- not a strength if you have to do the it's reading. Not the show. I was butchering <laughs> it, and uh, that's not either show. And and. And the bride's father was off the table on the right, and I could just see him how frustrated he was with how pathetic of a performance that I put on. And it was Did probably you get paid for this. I, I I felt that was I was like I I I kept replaying it in my head, being like, oh my god, I couldn't. Like I was I was my confidence got shot off the hop, so it was. Hard. Hey, it's really funny that this was just brought up. Actually, I. I got ambushed, interviewed on this trip. Remember me telling you this? Yes. So who was that that was doing those interviews? Was that. I think it was the team that was you it brought Covington? up. Covington? Yeah, it was Covington. Yeah, so, th- <laughs> so this guy, you know, we had met some of the people, and all of a sudden this guy's like, hey, Ryan, can I talk to you for a second? Boom, he's got a big video yeah, camera in my uh, face. And I was, I, was like, I was like, oh. Turn they, over. They probably the have this. First okay. shift. No, I was like, oh, what's this? Who's this for? What's this interview? He's like, oh, Covington Street, or whatever, just like quickly says it. I had the worst interview of all time. We have to get this clip. I, it was like I've never held a microphone or been asked a question. I was like, what just happened when I walked away? And I think they ambushed you, R.A., I thought. Or maybe you, but you don't remember. I didn't do any podcast. I got asked to do an interview, but I was like, I, I, was like, I can't do it now. But I got an email sent, so I, I don't know if it's the same like guy. I sounded like a moron. They got me a few times right after I got off the ice, so zero oxygen yeah. in the brain. What type of interview yeah, you lose sleep over? No, I didn't lose one second of sleep. I just think it's hilarious that sometimes you can be so good with words, and other times you can't even speak. So I just remember being super embarrassed after that. But back to Grinelli's line to Eichel Merles. <laughs> oh, he bro. said... How many how many beers would you have to drink for me to score on you in pond hockey? Eichel doesn't even play goalie. No, <laughs> no, no. How many I beers had you drank when the, you asked that question? The sh- None. Not the show ended. He's like, what the hell did I ask him? <laughs> No, no, I didn't realize it until a week later because I posted it on my Instagram thinking I asked a sick question. Oh. And then I started reading all the comments and I'm like, oh, wait. Wait, that was bad. That was so cringy. What am I doing? I thought you knew it right after. No, I asked if uh, Carey Price was thinking about the Olympics when he's in the Stanley Cup final. <laughs> that was a great one. Yeah. You think he's just concentrating on proving his worth as the number one guy in Beijing? It was the night before game one of the cup finals. <laughs> All right, what about you? Uh, oh, 
show cringe. Oh, God, I found a picking episode. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, wasn't in the other show, so I don't have any cringe for that. Yeah, Plenty of I, we, we all, all have Do you want an answer that they actually asked the question about from yeah, the, for the NHL? NHL. <laughs> yeah, what's yours, Mer? <laughs> I got a penalty shot, and of course it was in the, I don't know, first or third period, and then you miss it. And you have to do that skate of shame all the way back to the bench. It's, that was just cringy. You're just, just you're just so like. Oh, and if you have to skate by the other team's yeah. bench, yep, yeah, they're all giving it to you. That's. Oof. Did you did you make a decent move or did you like miss the net like a muppet? No, I did a good move forehand, backhand, back to the forehand. I just didn't raise it up. It was Johnny I got, Graham. I, I got an NHL one. Is uh, we were playing against the Flyers. It was the game I fought Rose Hill, and uh, I think we were up three one at the time. And he was taking a couple runs at Shane Doan. So. We're at home. It was a good atmosphere. I'm like, fuck this guy. He's taking runs at Donor to get the Flyers back in it. But that same game, uh, I ended up fighting him. It was a good scrap. We ended up. They scored four and answer. We lost five three. <laughs> Completely fucked the momentum up. But in that game, I made a turnover at the blue line. They didn't end up scoring, but I fucking I was so fucking angry because I knew if I made a mistake, I was getting no more ice. Yeah, that's such a panic. It was the worst. If I made a mistake, I knew I was that was the end of my night. And I made a mistake at the, the our blue line, and I fucking bent my stick over. Bo my Jackson. Knee. I went Bo Jackson, and <laughs> and Hart, Hartnell and Simmons were right there, and they're like, "Oh yeah, tough." They would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were oh, like, "Oh, you're tough." <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're tough as shit, is that like, Oh yeah, snap the ninety flex, buddy. You're the best, bellows. <laughs> and I felt oh, like the you... biggest loser and then that was in the midst of this route where they fucking I fucked up the momentum break the stick over the Ebo Jackson them ripping me like I felt like a loser in the showers I, uh, I remember um, Pittsburgh playoffs I think it was the year we went to the finals actually we played Philly and I had had a bad first round right and fans I had a bad year kind of it was after I had my big year and so fans are like they were not happy with me. I was well aware I was not at all. Maybe I was like the whipping boy, I think. And um, so I, I'm feeling the pressure. We got game one, Philly. I go out second, and I get the puck, and I wheel in that. And there isn't a Philadelphia Flyer within 30 feet of me. And I just panic, zero confidence at this time, and rip a backhand over oh, the glass, yeah. delay a game penalty. Oh. And it was just like, you just could tell. Like, once they saw it was me, I was like, oh, my God. Philly didn't score, but I remember being – I was like, I don't know if I can continue to play in the, in, in this on this team. I stink right now, but that was cringy. Who's the guy in the, the – the... that show where they, like, planted drugs on – or the, the – the, 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 oh, God, I'm drawing a blank. What are you talking that's about? Show Dassey, or... something Dassey, Sean Dassey. Oh, that's the that's the um the, he loved the WWE didn't murder. He, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, why are you thinking about this though? Like <laughs> I was saying, look at him. <laughs> how mad, how mad they were uh, at you at that point. They were like willing like plant drugs on you and like get, no, they didn't plant going, drugs is, on that kid. Is that they, going they, a little too far off the rails? Yeah, that we no, could edit that, that made no right. sense because the kid didn't get planted drugs on him. We'll take it. Well, out. he got planted like the murder weapon. I think they just worse. convinced him like that he like did it, and he's just like, "Can I go watch the WrestleMania oh, now?" Say- and they're like, "If you tell us you did it, you can go." He's like, "Yeah, I murdered her." I don't. I I remember. I don't remember the name. We of that can cut that all. Making out. murder. Yeah, making a murder. Making a murder. Kill that was the most. Kill them all. I did. The most yeah. ridiculous description. Oh, of making uh, a murderer. I think he's still in prison. Kill them all. I did. did do it. Yeah, knows? he was just up for one of his trials recently. Oh, what the fuck's his name now? I'm... Sean Dackery. No, now you got me thinking of it too. <laughs> Sean. A- no, not making <laughs> Sean Dackery. Sean Avery. Talking, making a murderer. Uh, Robert Durst. Are you talking about Robert Durst? No, that talking, was the HBO one. Oh, okay. Sean Avery. No. Avery did a little. Uh, did you see the? He did like a three-minute <laughs> little movie. He killed like, the bike lane person. Did you see that? No, I haven't. Yeah, he crushed Avery's it. just fu- he I, he loves the acting stuff. He, he did something. And I pretty, love that he loves the acting stuff. It was good. It was it was about um, I don't. It's about some some group in L.A. Right? It was like a, a commercial for them, but he acted the whole thing, and it was it was pretty entertaining. Actually, he's good. He at sa- it. he sent me. I I may have talked about it on the podcast before, but he sent me a couple of his like like his practicing clips, and. He, like he could be able to go off on monologue for like a minute, but yet, do, and I'm like, how the fuck could you even memorize a minute worth of dialogue, like word for word? I was like, could you do that? You think? Uh, could I? No, I don't. A think, minute? I don't think I could do that. Do you the RA? I don't. 
Uh, no, that's that'd be tough, man. Like, I mean, that's, that's got to be the hardest yeah. part of your being a conversation. Contract. I would yeah. never be able to memorize. You'd have to have the yeah. conversation with people over and over and is over. Is that the and hardest over. part of acting? Is is like that? For, well, for some people, it's the easiest part, though, just the memorization. But it's hard for a lot. It is hard to remember a lot of shit, man. Acting, acting ain't easy, biz. Ari couldn't remember to put the chef's gown on before the that's scene right. in uh, apron. apron. Yeah, Merles, so we'll go to you last because you need a few minutes to think about this. Gee, what country that you haven't been to yet is at the top of your list to visit? Switzerland. Switzerland looks awesome. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I follow this Instagram account that always has like pictures and videos of all these like cool villages and shit all around the world. It's gorgeous. And uh, Switzerland looks awesome. That might I be think one that's Swaziland. <laughs> Gee. I think I think Switzerland's probably one of the nicest nations to live in, like on the globe, hundred percent. Yeah, that was the one tough thing. I had a big Christmas trip uh, planned if I was going to stay in Sweden that year. I ended up retiring after two games, but it was going to be Swiss mountain skiing. And you know, by retiring, I didn't do it. But that that is a great pick. Mine is, um, and mine can't. I don't. My, I don't think mine will happen for a lot of years from now. Hopefully, if I'm lucky enough, but is Australia. It's a continent and a country. Shout out them. Uh, <laughs> I just think, like, it looks so amazing. Uh, my wife actually did, like, semester abroad there. She said it's sick. Some of the best golf in the world. But I want to go and for two weeks. Travel there is a nice yeah, so, uh, a day on a plane. So I, yeah, it's a but day. I'll have the sickest suite on any yeah, airline. Drun- Drunelli's been there. there, and then I ended up going there with the Olympic <laughs> Network. When I was first starting out my media career, I did something with the Olympic Network where I went there to Australia. I, stayed I think in, we I think we, we did a pod. We brought you aboard. That, that was you your first show. Was a, yeah. That was your one first, of my first show. Shows. That was his first one show of my, with us. One of my first ones. Was it really? Yeah, I was in Melbourne. And, and uh, the people I worked with were amazing. The restaurants and the, we would go out for these like night spots to grab drinks, like the cocktails. As far as a nightlife, Melbourne was incredible. I didn't get a chance to go to uh, what's the Sydney? Oh yeah, I, I went to Sydney. Sydney. Hey, but listen, so twenty four hours on a plane, you got to go like two weeks, right? Like, I, I know that sounds. Ridiculous, I took a couple edibles on my flight and I slept most of it, and that was the way to go. I don't know what, what you would want to do. I wasn't that rattled by staying that long on, long on a plane. Given given the expectations going in of how I don't like being cooped up in a fucking box that long, I took I think I took a 10 milligram and I was good. I was good Why, to yeah. go. What's to, your good country? To go. Yeah, but when if you do go to Australia, yeah. this is for anybody listening, it's you, you got to have at least three weeks down there to like okay, get everything done. I would, I, it's, it's, that was my it, only regret. And, I was, and if you go all the way there, you definitely want to pop over to New Zealand and hit yeah, that for a yes. few days too. So done. it's, uh, it's so, a, it, so, that's why I, I was thinking I was it's thinking so three much weeks. going on. Yeah, so, three weeks because and you can't do it till the kids are older. Like so three weeks. Is what, my answer: New Zealand. Wow, you're hopping on oh. Australia to do no. New well, he just brought it up, and my sister went on a oh. uh, a backpacking trip when, a trip when she just finished college. She went two weeks Australia, two weeks New Zealand, and I like I like the green aspect. Big uh, hiking there too, though. A right? lot of hiking, a lot of outdoorsy. It's like it's you feel like you're traveling to a different planet, at least from what I've seen, and it's a lot more green than Australia, and I feel like it's it's a little bit more. It's kind of got that. Like, it's like nature. It's there's tons of nature. Like, you you're, you're, I've been there. Even yeah, the big you're, cities you're zip lining. Where did you you're go there? Even the big that. cities don't yeah, feel I, too overwhelming. It's it's just very it's very clean living. Merles, do they have kiwi races in New Zealand? Is that why you like it? Hey, they, they got all. The, I, I actually crushed the Sydney casino there. It was when the Patriots made that comeback game. No. I was there for that, the so Atlanta I flew Super over. Yeah, there. yeah, I flew overnight from Japan, landed at like ten in the morning, went right to that casino. And the game was on at like ten in the morning there, and then oh, that Patriots—it it was unbelievable. Then I hit the craps after, and and then did all the tours and stuff. But we only got to see Sydney. We went up on the islands a little bit. We went to Brisbane, and then we went over to New Zealand. So we didn't get over to to like Melbourne. We didn't get over to so Perth so on the other people, side. Cold, the people Coast, friendly Ayers, there. Rock. There's oh yeah, there's awesome. So what country would you pick? So mine, it's it's like almost embarrassing to say. You've been you've lived in I've been everywhere, of them. and somehow. I'm I'm a hundred percent Irish. I've never been to Ireland. Somehow, it's embarrassing to say. For, you were in Europe wow. that long and yeah. didn't go over. To and Ireland. it was always like next next break we'll go Ireland. Next year we'll go Ireland, and it just it a couple happened. sandbags with Merles over there. No, wow, you gotta go. No, it's no. unreal. Well, yeah. we, especially we're if you're, doing I, yeah, we're doing Chelsea Irish, game man. in London, sandbaggers England, and we'll go over. Yeah, then Mermeet us in Ireland. And and Ari, you've already been there. You you love love it. it. Can't wait to go back. Was gonna, but didn't make it. Uh, I was gonna say Australia. Wit said that. Um, 
I think somewhere in Europe, probably either Germany, Spain, or Portugal. I would want to Whoa, go to all I those. I thought three. you would have been to Germany. I didn't know that. No, I've only. I've, the, Ireland's actually the only European country I've actually been to. I've never been on mainland Europe yet. Me so. either. Really? Italy's another joint that I'd like to go to, but Europe is so cool in the fact that you just hop on trains or flights that are twenty minutes. They're so cheap. They used to be. I haven't been over there in a while, but you just go everywhere when you're there. It's like so easy. Like living there must be sick to be able to just travel that easily and see all these different cultures. Biz, what would your goal song be? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Anyone else can jump in. <laughs> I, I, I've thought of this before. I never have one. I, Gee, I know you get I, something lined up. You're so you're saying if you were forced to have a goal song after you would score a goal, there would be no music playing? No, no, I know, no. I need to pick something. I know. I'm just like so. I, I'm so bad at that. Biz, I feel like yours would be. I got a feeling. You <laughs> love that song. Yeah, that that's never yeah, gonna happen. Which will be a mm bop. <laughs> no, be not. A, I got a feeling by who's the band? Black Eyed Peas. No, not a Chicken <laughs> Dick's Chance. Uh, Merle's. Yeah, it would maybe I be had like, it in uh, Sweden. Our team oh, really? in Sweden would do that. So I, what was your song? I, I had like an inch. Like, if you had starting lineup, you had a little bit of song too. You didn't nice. pick them. They did them. They did them for you. The first one, like when I got intro for the game, would be the American Jesus. There's, I don't know who sings that. It'd be like American Jesus. A tree. Like, no, I don't it's know the, what it was. It's the page mode. Yeah, and then that was for no? just my intro. No, I yeah, I don't even know. No, what that's it was. personal Jesus. But they would oh, only shit. do like small no clips of that, and just because I was the American on the team, they thought that was the thing. And then when my goal score, it was. Um, was it Alicia Keys? There was like the New York. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that Concrete was playing John, when which, I scored because yeah. I was from New York. Where it's kind of cool. Made so that's what they did it. I didn't get to choose them, but I thought it was kind of cool. I told G, I didn't know if we were like how, how they were doing intros here. I'm like, if they do intros, I'm like, I know what song I want. What, do you remember what I told you? I don't know. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Return of the Mac, because I was like, oh, I that's a great one. I haven't played that's in 20 years, one. so it would have been perfect if we fucking, if we were queuing up tunes, it would have been a, a, a good tune, but... I don't think I'm going to score too many goals as a goaltender. So. Have you thought of one in the meantime? Honestly, I just thought of that rap, that Wilkes Bear rap. Merle just gotten us his from, from Chris, Chris Beach. Beach. I just play that for me over and over. Ryan's flying. Ryan's uh, flying. I wasn't. All right, we'll do a <laughs> couple more here, then we get get ready to wrap up the last one of the year. Uh, well, you can jump in on this one too. Other guys, Biz and Ari, are you guys Sativa or Indica fans? Sativa. Uh, yes. Oh, whatever, the a, one, whatever, whatever the one, one. Whatever, yeah. what, yeah. whatever, whatever the one that keeps you energized. Yeah. I had like, I had twelve days off. I felt great, and I came on this trip. But yeah, the one that the one that puts you to sleep. I am so useless if I ever smoke that. Okay, uh, we'll wrap up with this one, I guess. What surprised you most about your trip to Detroit? How there's no nothing open uh, eat, eating wise past eleven o'clock. Yes, I think downtown is is shuts down early. It seems for food, but what surprises me most that a priest came to the outdoor hockey fest and dressed in full garb or uniform. Um, I don't know. That's tough. You have one G pizza without a doubt. I mean, you set it off the jump, but I I fell in love with the pizza here. I think it's unbelievable. My, one, I already talked about how the setup was unreal, and but I, I got a RA. That was probably the most surprising that first game he played. That was, I was shocked. That was in Detroit. Yeah, uh, true that. Uh, thank you, Merles. I appreciate it. Mine was probably just the the prevalence. Maybe this is more about the Chicklets fans than Detroit, but just the prevalence and prominence of blowing hay all weekend all over the place like you, the cops didn't seem to care like you don't want to be disrespectful i know it's legal but some cops you don't know if they're gonna bristle if they see you smoking it but i don't think anybody had a care in the world about all the all the hay being blown and by the way like i said earlier, the, the it's good stuff here i mean michigan grows some nice stuff i was very surprised craps 50 minimum i was like then you got you got to double the pass line if you hit it outrageous, it's outrageous. Like, it just, just like oh my god 50 minimum surprising Thirty-five dollar blackjack. I'm a cheap fucker. I like the five dollar blackjack guys. I like the sit exactly. there all Can't find anything. Can't find anything away. under fifteen. No, give me 20. a sixty-five dollar win after three hours, and I got my dick right hard. You got your sub for tomorrow. A couple beers. You're perfect. <laughs> Well, this segment was presented you by presented to you by OCB Rolling Papers. OCB is the largest rolling paper brand in the world and has been one with nature, crafted naturally since 1918. So you know they've perfected the process for a consistently great session, time after time. 
OCB offers a full line of papers made with sustainable fibers, including flax, wood, organic hemp, bamboo, virgin, and come in a full line of sizes in both booklets and cones. No GMOs, no chlorine, and no dyes in OCB papers at all. Make OCB bamboo your new second favorite plant. In 2020, OCB rolled out America's first ultra-thin, slow-burning bamboo rolling paper and cones, and they've been taking the market by storm. Be sure to ask for OCB wherever you buy your papers and sample the entire line of products. In the meantime, OCB has an unreal deal for our listeners. Visit OCBUSA.com slash chicklets to get four booklets of OCB and a rolling tray for just $4.99. Unreal deal. The bundle's worth $20. It costs you just $4.99. It's a limited time only. And follow OCB on Instagram at OCBUSA to stay in touch with the natural wonder of OCB. Must be 21 plus to buy the papers and follow their accounts. And, uh, yeah, lots of OCB finding this week out here, boys. Uh, <laughs> I know we got a couple more minutes left. We talk about grinds my gears. And this is one. I, it's oh, gotta, boy. <laughs> it's got to grind. I think this probably grinds everyone's we have gears. an hour left. I, <laughs> no, we've got a few more minutes left. I uh it happens every time you're at a hotel is people who fucking let the hotel doors slam like late at night or early in the morning and wake the whole fucking floor up. No? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've actually never, my thing in uh, hotels is being near the elevator and that waking me up. I've never thought, I've never, that's never happened to me. You never get, <laughs> you've never gotten woken up because the doors are always heavy. Yeah, he's and the door slam. slammer, all right? Yeah. Listen, maybe he's like, on wait the a minute. Side. Wait a minute. Do I hold I the door? Say, he's maybe. fucking whipping them <laughs> shut. <laughs> But it is, it's, it's been wet on everybody. I gotta get up. Everybody's yeah. gotta get it's up. It's been yeah. waking me up the last ten trips. I, I realized <laughs> as I finished, that's what, what you were going to say. I'm like, I'm that guy. So maybe that's me. Now, a lot of it's the housekeeping because they they put that latch on there, so that's they're in I, and out of the room. That's kind of how I view a lot of shit. Is where constantly. like people like like unknowingly do shit that annoys other people, but like they those people who are annoyed by the shit that other people are doing are also doing annoying shit that the people who aren't annoyed by the things that you just described would be annoyed by. Do you get what I'm saying yeah, by yeah, that? Yeah. You just like yeah. inception it's, it's like a yin yang. You just thing, like man. inceptioned RAs grind my gears. Fucking Sean was laughing back there, but I think I made perfect sense. Oh I know what you I meant. fucking nailed the dismount, mm. bitch. Did you ever get waken up, G, by a lot of hotel doors slamming? No, I actually think that might be me who is the yeah. hotel well, door. What I, well, what I do Biz sometimes, if I don't doors. have to set an alarm, like today, I, I mean, I was... I wasn't when up late last night. When you ever have to set an alarm? <laughs> um, when we tape in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> Those 11 a.m. tapings. Motherfucking nine last week on a Monday. Hey. I was up at six guzzling coffee. I wanted to ask you guys what you made of the, the whole um, um, Aaron Rodgers press conferences after the whole fiasco went down and the fact that he was just like it, when's the last time you saw an athlete be that I know, raw on camera like it's like for, you know I know we're a hockey podcast but that was just like a, that was a slaughter fest yeah he seems to really hate playing there it's I, I mean I don't know you make, what does he make 35 million right are you an, a Rogers guy or not I, I've never been a huge fan I've always said this he is unreal like I have blatantly said I, I mean Maybe like as as good as they've they've come right when he's on, it just seems like he's as good as anyone's ever been. Yeah, he's... but I've just always kind of thought he's a little bit like not full of himself, right? Just I don't know, like his whole vibe. I've never been a huge fan of him away from the field. This time, I mean, he's so unhappy there. He's just dog in the place, and I couldn't really believe it. I do you, know, do I you know, agree with? Do you agree with the aspect of like? What does that do for them? To this should year? he be consulted on big decisions they're they're making? Like, let's say drafting another quarterback with a first rounder. When no, they try to fuck be- that, dude. They don't owe him shit. Okay, so drafting what, another quarterback. Okay, so, they're setting themselves up. Like what? He's a diva, dude. He's a diva. Yeah, I mean, signings, Talented. yes. Signings, hey, let's get this okay, guy so, Aaron. But, but drafting, but, man, that's their organization. That's their future. I know you're a Packers guy, but how are they supposed to be like, hey, Aaron, are you going to be okay if, with us getting a QB that we think will be our QB in five years? Like, I th- But I also think that like, well, from a Tom Brady perspective, I feel like he had a lot to say with what was going on in Tampa Bay. And he's like, yeah, well, they're, just, they're investing in him right now and the moment. Where Green Bay seems to be an organization where it's kind of just like, you know, we do things by the books. And if you're fucking, if you're, if you're the Patriots, it might be a different ball game where it's like, well, yeah, we're also producing championships every year. And we may, we might be a little bit more narrow minded because we just kind of saw that dynasty unfold. It's also a first round pick biz. It's like your window is only so short. 
You know, like he wants to win now. You're drafting a first round guy, right? Who could be an impact wide receiver in the lineup yes, right now? Okay. Right now. Oh, okay. And, and, okay. and they're saying, "Oh, we're betting now. on the future." And he's saying, "Motherfucker, I just followed up with an MVP season. Fuck your future. Uh, your future is right now, right bitch." Now. That's what I'm saying. That's the frustration, no? Okay. Okay. Listen. And we've never been that good to where, like, I get, like, I get the other side of saying he's a diva, but it's, it's also like, motherfucker, give me another receiver. You might have another okay. fucking ring, and okay. we're talking about now, bitch. Hey, me, me saying that they shouldn't ask him about draft the QB, not thinking that it could have been a sick receiver. I was more thinking hockey, right? They don't always make an immediate impact. Okay, football, you're right. You could get a legit, like, stud wide receiver. But the press conference is a different story because, like, what is – I just don't understand. What does that do for your team this year? He's probably thinking, I'm going to play unreal no matter what. These comments yeah, don't matter. I get it. But you just cannot tell me that that's, like, a good storyline leading into a season. I, well, that's then a- you also have your best receiver, Dev- Devontae Adams, um, who, like, is po- – posting out the same fucking Instagram post of basically being like the last dance. It's kind of like, I see how they run the ship here. We ain't cool with it, but we're the biggest ballers. Let's go do it on our own terms and then bounce. And I can understand where like there's a level to it now where it's like, well, they, they're they they're in the locker room, no? Yeah, so if they go out, like you said, and ball out and they're unreal, then I have no clue what I'm talking about, So, which has happened five million times on this show. And all, as great as he is, and he's one of the greatest <laughs> quarterbacks you've ever fucking seen play oh, throwing he's the ball. But he's also like, what, one in four, one in five in NFC Championship games, one Super Bowl. So I don't think he has the fucking playoff resume to like necessarily act like the that that all the times. I mean, I, the record's out they are, but at the end of the day, it's playoff wins. And Fair yep, enough. He's got yep. playoff wins, but he's only got one Super Bowl win. So, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. Hey, I wanted to talk about it because I, we don't see shit like that in hockey, where no, a fucking no. a, a player's just going at no, management. All right, uh, one last one for you, Biz. <laughs> when uh, net, when they say if a movie's coming out this Friday on Netflix. And it means like, you know, 12 a.m. It's supposed to drop. And Netflix doesn't drop it till 3 o'clock this in the morning. This is a grind my gears. And, yeah. And this is one that you wait for shows. Now, uh, Netflix quarterly earnings, it dropped. They're not Their ship's not being ran very tightly. And that was the first time it happened in like years where they their quarterly earnings drop. So I don't know if... What show? What, what happened? No, it's when, when streaming services say, oh, it's dropping Friday, whatever. It usually drops at midnight because that's Friday. But Netflix doesn't drop it until 3 a.m. Eastern time because it's not... Because I think they're based in California, so it's actually... They wait for it's actually 3 Insane o'clock in grind California. my gears because it's 3 hours. This is fucking hour. nuts that it's we're nuts. talking about it's this. It's nuts. Who the hell is waiting up till midnight at 3 a.m. to begin with? Uh, Hello? <laughs> yeah, which, like, which, just go to sleep that night and start in the morning. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You have to watch it right then? Well, no, watch it at midnight. What I'm saying is if it if it's, comes on Friday, you should be able to watch it at midnight. But Netflix doesn't put it on Netflix on the East Coast till 3 a.m. East, Eastern time until it drops, until it's fucking Friday in California. Could be this. It, it anytime could, something says Friday, it's whatever time zone you're in, not fucking like three hours this later. This is his TV version of the shark. <laughs> Don't warn the people on the news about the sharks. So I'm calling them shock attacks. Do you think... Think that that had an effect on their quarterly earnings? Yes or no? No, the shitty um, fucking um, run of shows. I, has. I would maybe say yes because I I also know nothing about them to where like I would know other reasons that they might have gone down. Is there? You think there's a lot of people? On I the, think there's more streaming. How many services? people are mad about the fact that they're not dropping it at the time that you think they should drop it on when they're announcing it? Have you seen it online as a complaint? No, it's fucking TV nerd shit. Probably, I don't even know if anyone ever figured it out. I'm sure someone did. But it's just like, you here Friday, and you're like, fuck, man. It's came out until 3 o'clock. It happens all the time. But I Netflix is the only one who like, does it. the I only think, person. most people are like, uh, Netflix is probably like Friday, the, oh. guys. Like, at some point Friday, when you wake nah. up, you can watch it. No, only Friday's person. midnight. But no, the shows have stunk lately. That's why they're All right, yeah, just there. move over to Europe with me, and then it'll be <laughs> 3 a.m. Is, is our 9 a.m. So it'll be perfect. <laughs> That'll of fuck reason, me folks. all up. Yeah. All right, boys. I don't know if you guys have any closing statements, arguments, thoughts, whatever, after a tremendous season, a, a long, not really a long, <laughs> the one before was fucking endless. But uh, it's been a great several months, what, seven months, eight months. Uh, Detroit was awesome. Sponsors were great. Grinelli. And we'll have a vlog of every single thing that happened all the tournament, all everything, you guys the whole time. Uh, drop it on YouTube sometime in the next week or two. Yeah, I, I'm excited for the interviews that are going to drop. It's it's awesome to think about just having a little time away from the game and 
come back refresh. We're going to get real refocused for next season, add to this podcast, continue to try to get better. And I think it's been a kind of a crazy two-year run with COVID and then this oh, year. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's uh, a little recharge your batteries time. We come back, and I, I hope you enjoy the interviews that we did. I think a lot of them are entertaining and hold you over for a couple weeks, and we can all get back and chat, have a bunch of things to talk about in, in, in whatever, three, four weeks from now. And just to reiterate, we're not going off the air completely. We are dropping episodes for the rest of the month. We're just going to be interviews only. There's no news to talk about, so we're just going to be dropping awesome interviews. Why we did them down if in New York. If something big happens, we'll be on. Yeah. I mean, it have to be like a major. A fucking trade or something, but like a defenseman signing for nine point five million again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do it. Charlie McAvoy. He's got to be the next. He getting he's paid. next, baby. He's Holy next. shit! What's Chucky spot? Yeah, do with that one already? Right? Uh, huh? Chucky uh-huh. Brinks trucks. They're gonna fucking burst. We'll burst save burst that for burst another runs. podcast. Gonna bully him down to seven. <laughs> yeah. That's probably. No, I love you, Bergy. But anyways, everybody have a great rest of your summer, uh, and we'll be seeing you online and elsewhere. And uh, fucking thanks for everything. Thank, Thank you, you so everything. much. Yeah, love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. You're the best.